so we're probably confusing a little bit, but I just did a little <laughs> podcast by myself. Um, and then Lito was like, man, I kind of want to talk about the Pels. So, you know what? We said, fuck it. We'll do two yeah. shows in one night. Let's do it. First take away. Yes, with this. Get your money's worth out. <sighs> Ooh. It's going to be one of those nights. Huh? Presenting by the Birdsaw Law from the official Andrew Lord's Pro Pell Sock, located at 918 Point Street by the Superdome. Give a call at 504 523 5413. You're somebody who's been involved in an accident. Birdsaw Law from the official Andrew Lord's Pro Pell Sock. It's going to be me and Lito tonight. Smash that like button. Um, I'm actually going to let Lito drive the show. Uh, we're going to kind of just, this won't be as structured. It's going to be a back and forth conversation. So if y'all have questions for us, I'll we'll just pull them up and uh, kind of go from there. Yeah, well, Hob, he did. He did. Um, he felt bad for me. <laughs> Rachel, of course, man. Like we the funny part is I love when people get mad about mad at us. Like we do this out of love. Like <laughs> for real. That's true. Um I keep doing a ton of <laughs> I, we could be doing a ton of other shit. Like, yeah. Uh make sure you smash the like button. So uh appreciate everyone here. Um Leo, I think the perfect thing to talk about is the J V thing. I, it's oh um, it's kind of mind boggling to be honest with you. Wait, was some- wait. I brought this up. Keith Smith. I think it's a little too cute to start Nance in place of Valentine's to open the second half. <laughs> Pelicans got off to a good start today by playing through Valentine's. This dude covers the Celtics. Covers, yeah. he, he doesn't watch the Pelicans. Apparently. Apparently, he's never he's never watched. If he thinks that's, that, that is cute, I, I now understand what he means by cute, but if he thinks it's cute, he has no idea how annoying it is for us. And the, the fact that if you go in his mentions and you see you see people who watch the Pelicans say, Yeah, this is not nothing new. Like they've been this has been going on for a while now. Dog, look, I don't even know where to start with this. I I tell you what, let's start here. Let's start here. Eleven points in the NBA quarter is egregious. 11, 11 points. Dyson Daniels in the NBA quarter? Egregious. That, it was that, funny. I thought Dyson had a good first half. No, he no, 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 no. He, he's number 11. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that went way over my head. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Go ahead. <laughs> I, he, listen, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. He's still gun shy, though. He can't play. He cannot play. He's as good as that man. Dyson, Dyson probably one of the best defensive players I've ever seen, dog. But he can't play. Explain why he can't play. There's a lot of people because it's you're you're right in a sense, right? Like in the play, this is what the playoffs are going to look like. So listen, yes, this is what the all right, all right. So 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 right now in in 82 games. You playing with 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 space and you playing with pace, pace and space. Everybody here, you 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 hear that all the time, right? In the playoffs, the game mm. slows down, so there's less pace. What's that, Reed? The game slows down, so it's less pace, and the floor shrinks, so it's less space. So listen, if you got a guy on the floor who's willing, who's not willing to take a shot. He two of he, them. He can't. Oh, don't even. We we gonna get there. No, we 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 gonna get to. We we gonna get. To, we gonna get the redacted. So, Dyson, listen again. Welcome back. But dog, he had a listen. He, I, I get it. I know I, his first game back. I totally understand. And I'm not trying to shit on Dyson because he's 21. I'm not trying to do that. He used to be 19. He used to be a long time ago. Uh, well, maybe he's, he's twenty. I don't. I don't know. It, it don't matter how old he is. No, he's twenty one. Just turned twenty one. The pro- the problem is the lack of aggression offensively is still there. Though I seen Dyson playing the G League game, and I know it's the G League. Know, what's up, Thomas? Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for real. Listen, <clears throat> I know, I know, I know. I seen Dyson playing the G League, and he wasn't. He was more, he was he he looked more well rounded of a basketball player than what I've seen in the NBA game. I know it's the G League, Justin. I know it's the G League, but what I'm saying is the mechanics, the mechanics are there, right? I saw I saw certain instances where he went to the he went to the rack and he was aggressive. 
it was a play tonight. It was two plays that stuck stuck Say out. Say it. Out I think we're saying the same thing. Go ahead. It's two plays. One play, he was in the corner. He had a wide open shot. <laughs> I said that one, and he passed it up. The second play, I didn't even I didn't even see your show yet. So that's the, this is the crazy part. The second show was I don't remember who hit him when he somebody passed the ball to him when he rolled. He was wide open, <laughs> he was five feet away from the rim. And you know that thing I always say about Dyson. You said that too. Yes. Well, just go up. Just go up with it. At, at you think point, he's scared to miss? At that Seriously. point, I mean, I don't know what I don't know. I, I just don't think he. I don't know what because what's the what's the point of playing in the G League game where you put up twenty two points and you have? I think he took like fifteen shots or thirteen shots or something like that. Like, bro, shoot the ball. Listen, Justin, that team that you played against, they play entirely too good interior defense for you to try to make a shovel pass to a because because listen, look, the thing is, we know, and this is what the Celtics is thinking. Joe Mazzula cold blooded. His quotes after the game, that that quote at the end of the game about what happened in the third quarter, and he said the people who we wanted to shoot the ball, they shot the ball and they missed. Lito, he Duh. said this after the last game. He said we're gonna Duh. live with Larry Nance shooting corner threes. He Willie told you, you he told you your game plan after they beat you, whatever it was, a couple months ago, and you still went back to it. Willie, Willie, Willie gonna live with it too. That's that's the that's the problem. Willie's gonna so, live with it too. We're gonna talk about that. So, once again, guys, make sure you smash the like button. So, we already did a show. There's like 60 people in here, so they're probably can really confuse. This is gonna be kind of like y'all show. Like y'all want to talk. Y'all want to talk about topics. We're gonna talk about topics, questions, whatever y'all want to do. We'll talk about it. me and Lito are gonna be here for a while. We got nothing else to do. The kids are asleep, so and we got nothing. alcohol, so it should be fun. Um, doc, I can't do the Larry. Look, Larry's a fine basketball player. I like him. He does a lot of stuff for the community. Look, it doesn't make sense to start him in the second half. Then just listen, start him in the first half. Listen, just if you're gonna do it, just start him both halves. Check this out. I said this, I literally just said this on, on Twitter. I was talking to J Dub, uh, this dude Kev, um, a couple other people, and this this um this this lady named Anna. And I said, I for real. <laughs> I see Rachel's question. That's funny. Start um, all right, so look, I don't ha- I do not have a problem with Larry Nance. I think Larry Nance is a decent to good role player dependent on the situation. The issue for me with Larry comes in with how he's being used because when he, I literally tweeted this, when he, when his minutes allocation is increased, that literally just means that JV cannot play. I don't, I don't know if we've ever seen this Boston Celtics team play again. Um, I don't know if we've no, watched we're them. Done. Okay. I don't know if we watched any film on them before. You can't go small on. They have a seven foot three center. They they and then if he not in the game, Al Harford is in the game, and he's and six Al eleven, Hor- right? It's- six nine, six ten, whatever. He's he's taller than Larry Nance. You can't. You cannot go small against that team. It 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 don't work. And also, if you're gonna have a player on the floor. He got to be some sort of threat to score at some point in the possession. And is it, oh, Lord, look at my dog. They, they, they got He got to be a threat to score at some point in the possession. And, it, and if you put two guys out there, you got two guys on the floor who at no point want to shoot the ball, what the fuck are you, what are you doing? You know what you're doing, Justin? And five, you know what the answer to that is? You're scoring 11 points in a quarter. That's what you're doing. <laughs> It's funny that five just joined. I hope you had a good. You had a, you had a burger five. You went. You had a burger at a. At the corner. spot. At the oh, spot. the beach corner. Yeah. yeah. You should have called me, man. Man, I, I, I ain't know it. I know you. It's all good. I guess. It's all good. Shout Shout out out I just got free. You know. <laughs> well, welcome it's, to the show, five. Uh, cheers. Uh, Appreciate it. So, perfect timing because it was actually Jarrett's quote. What you were talking about, Lido, is about playing small. You can't play small when there's a seven foot two guy on the floor. And then if he's not on the floor, there's a six ten dude. So Jarrett, we're talking about Larry starting the second half. 
I would. I, I'm going to look tonight. I'm going to try to pull the stats when Larry started the second half with the plus minuses. I cannot imagine it's a positive. Cannot imagine. But hold what, what is? Oh, hold up. I'm sorry. I cannot let you ask this question. I, Jeffrey. Who? That first sentence is crazy. Who, Who not a good? <laughs> Justin, I mean Ooh. Jeffrey. I, mean, why are you coming? I was like, I was confused about that. We'll we'll, we'll get to it. Start. We'll talk to. We'll right. talk about it. Right. The fans are driving the show tonight. Five. Right. Does it make sense to start Larry in the second half? Can you can you can you walk me through this thought process? Then why not start in the first half? I mean, I I think it's matchup dependent, right? Like if if JV was getting played off the floor, it would make sense. But they're almost like predetermining that JV's gonna play bad and then go into Larry. And like after like listening to Coach Missoula in the press conference, it's almost like he knew it. He knew it. Like, all right, well, he talked about like the beginning of the second quarter and how like they were gonna go small and they were gonna just put KP out there. And you saw like almost like five plays in a row. They go screen and roll and have KP in the middle and they end up with like a Jalen Brown dunk or a KP mid-range pull up. Like, like I mean, uh, like, dog, no, like this is basketball at its purest, at its finest. Oh, Coaches executing like, all right, this is what you're going to attempt to do. All right, well, I got something for that. And, and you saw it from, from a really good and well-coached team. Chaz joining. What's up, Chaz? Hello, y'all, man. How y'all doing? We're doing. We're letting the fans drive this show, Chaz. Uh, So I'm like trying to answer all questions and comments. Go ahead, uh, Leo. Yo, I don't remember who it was. Somebody in the comments said you put Willie. You put Willie in. I mean, uh, Lord, you put Willie. You put Larry in. (laughs) You put Larry in the game, and then you had Dyson. Nah, 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 fuck that. Nah, fuck that. Boy, thank the Lord. Boy, thank Coach Harbaugh. I love you, man. I don't even know what I said. I'm sorry. You put Willie you put in. Willie in. <laughs> My bad. My bad. That was a good one. I'm going to see myself out. <laughs> you put Dyson in the game while Larry's in the game, and you have Dyson checking Chris steps. Like, what are we – what do we? The other thing, the other point that I was trying to make is like usually when JV comes in, you you you're you're in drop coverage when you play JV. When Larry comes in, you still play drop coverage. The versatility that you tell me that we have, I don't see because you don't use that man to his advantage. And, and the other thing too is, you know, a lot of bullshit about JV being a bad defender. I ain't saying JV a great defender, but he he the scapegoat of a lot of shit. That 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 really ain't his fault. Um, and, and his if you want to talk about defensive ratings, they both got the same defensive rating this season. And and JV is like a, a, a percentage or two point better. It's like one oh one oh nine three to one oh nine seven, something like that. I yeah, I don't think JV's did, like in the first quarter tonight. Did JV lose his matchup with Chris Epps? I thought he did a pretty good job in his first six minutes of. I thought he was fine. You don't play him long enough for him to find out. You don't play him long enough for him to find out if he do did lose the matchup. No, I don't think so. I think I think you were able to play this despite that. Like you got really good looks in the first couple minutes, right? Like oh, I like looks. the sense of this, bro. I thought I thought this was like one of Willie's like great games in the first quarter. Cause they were like, there were some plays and some thought process behind certain things. I'm like, you getting corner threes, like you're running plays for said corner three. You're getting down hills. CJ McCullum gets a dump. You know why? Because there's space. Guess who's in the corner? JV's in the corner. Like as a space. Like like what are we? What are we saying? Like JV's not the reason why they blow you out. Like he's not the reason. Like your team started to lose the game. I don't see why he becomes a scapegoat in that point. Well, it was funny about that five. I talked about it on the, like the recap. Like the lineup was working. Six minutes in, you had 21 points. He held Boston 13. It was 21 13. 
Like I didn't think why 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 is it necessary to make a sub right there? Why can't that group go on for another minute and a half, two minutes to see if they can extend said lead? Why was there an automatic substitution with six minutes? It goes back to the schedule substitutions. Like, why couldn't it just be like, nah, let's 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 stay with this lineup? Justin, the other, the other what was that last week or this this past week? You said the OKC game was a playoff game. Why mm-hmm. couldn't this be treated as a playoff game? I thought Milwaukee was like this. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, why couldn't this one be treated as a playoff game? Right? Like, why couldn't this one be treated as like in high intensity game, which it seemed like so, right? Like CJ McCollum was fired up, Zion Williamson was fired up, like, like the energy was there. But what I thought was like the like they just have a really good coach. And him and Sam Cassell really thought about what they wanted to do and they executed. And in this in his post-game presser, like he's telling you, yeah, the reason why we started to win in the second quarter, the guys we planned on leaving open missed shots. Like as if he knew what was going to happen. Man. That that seems like great coaching right there. Chaz joined the show. Chaz, you have anything? You just you just like how no, you got a way to talk. I'm just letting. I'm letting. I'm listening. I'm, 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 I'm listening, y'all. Um. <laughs> yeah, I just think you know. Um. You know how some some like people like child stars and stuff have like conservatorships. Mm-hmm. It's because. People realize that if they're left to their own devices, they're just gonna buy a bunch of heroin and die. <laughs> Willie Green should have a conservatorship. A, a coach like Willie Green should never have inherited a team with this much talent. Because I, I give you a perfect example, right? The reason why the lineup adjustment has been working, in my opinion, because they're playing with pace to get no more threes. It's a new, it's an introduction of a new thing to, to the opposition. Right. So it gives you a slight advantage because there isn't a ton of data on this particular lineup with Trey in the starting lineup and things like that. And it's certainly not a ton of data on Zion being in the lineup. Right. So you go from how the original starting lineup was bad to a lineup that's pretty decent. Okay, cool. What does Willie Green do? He goes back to the lineup that has a ton of data on it at this point for us, like, all right. He's starting. We know he's starting Larry in the third. That's this is what he does, and it hasn't. It's had a negative effect this entire time. Do we have it's, a stat on that. Do we have a stat on the on the? Yeah, I, I do. That? I do. I, I'm gonna pull it up. It says it's fucked up. That's my stat muse. It's <laughs> fucked up. That's what it says. So it's on the real. I, I don't. I don't even know where to look, Justin. I, you got to go to hell to. It's got to be a negative, right? It's got to be a negative. That's the, be, the, the Larry third quarter. Negative. It's got to be a negative. But bro, here's the crazy thing about it. It's and again, Willie Green probably forgot more basketball than I'll ever know. But it's like, bro, you're also neutralizing Zion in this situation. Because you're taking away all the spacing on the floor. And like Joe Mazzula, I saw a couple things. And people were like, well, it, it would have been different if Brandon would play. And I'm like, I think it would have been a little more interesting down the stretch. But Joe Mazzula already told you he's not worried about Brandon from beyond the arc. He's not worried about Dyson Daniels. He ain't worried about Larry Nance. He said if you shoot under 38%, I think, from beyond the arc, he don't give a fuck. Go, no, no, go no, ahead. No, 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 no. With 36 40. No, 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 if you 40. shoot under 40, he don't give a fuck. He said 40? Yeah, he said 40, he said 40 oh, is the new wow. benchmark Thank for him. You. Okay. So yeah. he don't care. So, like, what do you – like, you see something working. You go away from, from it. From, you don't even give it a chance to fail. You just, like – you just automatically, like, it's predetermined you're going away from this. You're punting on third down every time. And the reason we beat the Bucks is because the lead was so large. Because if, if there is like five more minutes on on the clock, this game is that Bucks game. You lose it. The Pelicans are a lot closer to zero and three than they are to being one and two right now. And that's all, in my opinion, is all due to a major coaching disadvantage teams the Pelicans have from night to night. I got a question. Do y'all think the do you whoever? 
want to answer first. Do y'all think when we beat Milwaukee, right, and JV went off in the first half and he started the second half, do you think it was already predetermined though that Larry Nance was going to start that second half and they're predicated on JV failing and going one of three, one of four? Or do you think JV was always going to start the second half against the Bucks? I think because Brooke and Bobby was in foul trouble. So you, you, you thought JV was – what do you mean by that, Chad? I think I – think, was Brooke in foul trouble during that game? Because I think they probably no, won. So, I, know, I know JV got off to like a, a really hot start. So I'm saying, right. though, is that like if he doesn't get off to a hot start, was Larry Nance going to start that second half? Oh, yeah. Because absolutely. that's crazy. See, that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Absolutely. Going small is insane against Brooke Lopez and going small against Chris Saps Porzingis and Chet Holmgren. It's no, it's insane because you had the advantage. Yeah. Right, that's why that's why it makes it insane. Why do we play? Why do we play to other people's plays like style of play and not not the other way around? Best bad staff, man. <laughs> bad staff. Like, it, go ahead, Five. You, I didn't mean to step on your take. You, you, you. Oh, go ahead, right. go ahead. The reason you do that, the reason you do that, is because you don't know what you do well. You have no identity. Mm. Your identity. And, and see, the problem is, all right, you watch that first quarter, right? And you watch how they played. So when a little adversity start picking up in the second, leading into the third, you don't have nothing to fall back on because you don't know what you do. So you just you just start doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you start wilding. For what? Like, Drew Holiday had a quote after the game where he said, sometimes you need to get punched in the mouth to realize what's going on in, in the game, right? So when the other team, when you punch them in the mouth, and the other team start punching back, what do you do? What do you have? You have, we're going to start Larry Ness now. He's going to figure this shit out, and everything is going to be fine from here on out. And, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, Justin, go ahead. No, I, uh, yeah, because I pulled this up. Pause. I pulled this up for Lito, but this this is the guy that covers the Celtics saying, I think it's a little too cute to start Nance in place of Valanciunas to open the second half. Pelicans got off to a good start today by playing through Valanciunas early. And you know what's funny? This is probably his first time seeing it, right? Or maybe yeah. second time. But like, imagine if he's second been time this year, it. or yeah, this year. Like that. Okay, yeah. So, but imagine if he's watches every game, right? <laughs> oh, like us, ninety percent of the games. At this point, you like, yo, this is a crime. This is a crime. Man, somebody texts me. I ain't gonna say his name. Shout out to them. They said, and I and I quote, they say, I'm gonna call the cops and say Willie Green attacked two blonde women. It's all I could do. <laughs> and I'm like, man, hey, we just got a role to play, bro. Do what you can. Willie Green is bad, bro. He is he is really bad. But, do you bro. Think, but I don't think it's a I don't think it's a Willie Green. I think it's a collective. It's gotta be a collective. Yeah, I mean, we okay, okay. Well, here's the thing. We we can say that it's a staff it, like issue, because okay, cool. But the thing is, you brought someone new in to remedy some of these situations. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, I can see if you didn't have the information because it's like, well, we're just learning on the job. But you have access to the information. Even if you don't know what works, you know what hasn't worked. It ain't like it ain't like Larry Nance is like instant grits. And like some games he's good, some games he's bad. Some It's like, no, he's been consistently not good for, for a little while now or not helping to put you in an advantageous position, pause, for a while now. I think a lot of it is just stubbornness and an unwillingness to adapt to the the players you have available right now. That that's, that's what I think. Like, you can't – but the thing is, even if everyone was healthy, it's like this, did, this wasn't working when everyone was healthy. So I don't really – like – what could you doing? It's, it, it, it's really perfecting. Like, look, if if it was like an up and down thing, like right? some days it worked, some days it didn't. I feel like it's never, like maybe it's never right. worked. See, but God, see that. I feel like issue, it's it's failed all, like over ninety percent of the time. The issue, my bad, five. You had something? No, 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 no. I'm, I think we go into the same place. Go to the same the, store. The, the issue for me is is, is the record. The the record the record is 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 fool's goal in a sense, because when you look at the record, you feel like okay, these are the things that we did. This is how we got here, and that's that's not necessarily always the case. Like we talk about plus minus, right? For instance, mm -hmm. if you look at Larry's plus minus the last game, he was a plus. But if you look at his play, it was a minus. 
through 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 and through. There, there was there was there was no there was nobody on the floor who respected his game enough to uh I mean, they're they gonna let him shoot regardless. <laughs> like, there, there's nobody on the floor who is scared of of Larry Nance. It, it, it just, it just is what it is. Maybe, maybe the coach is because that's the only person. That's the only way I could see it. The, 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 the problem is, is that principles, habits, identities. You going to, you going into the playoffs now, dog. Like this shit. Like, like how he called that shit. Like how he called it cute. Yeah, it's gonna be real cute. You fuck around and you pull this against, uh, I don't know, enter a team, it, put any team in there, and and you go, bro. They had, like Corey said, they had Harford and Porzingis in the game at the same time, and and you went small. They and, even had Xavier Tillman out there. Like there, yeah. there was so many opportunities for Z, for JV to have. You know, Justin, Justin, check, check this out. Remember the, the again the playoff game you guys had and you guys decided to play slow. Like this mm-hmm. would have been a game to play slow, right? Because you don't necessarily have an advantage playing fast against this team. You don't. Because they can shoot better than you. They're more athletic than you. Like they can do everything you can do better. So you might want to use what you have, which what they don't have, like Porzingis can't guard JV. Horford necessarily doesn't have athleticism anymore to guard JB and definitely is David Tillman can't guard JB. Like you should have tried to, you know, play four or five pick and roll and, and beat this team because you weren't going to outshoot them because we saw how that went. So uh, this man just, said, well, you know, they play a lot of the perimeter guys. It's like, you got to do seven three and another seven footer out there. That's not no fucking perimeter threats outside. Like, what are you? Did you watch the game? Was you there, coach? I, that's what, what are was, you talking about? I was thinking about this. I, I love what when Chris said. I said this on the the recap, but like, JV is your running game. Also, Chris Steps Porzingis doesn't want to be involved in fucking 30 screens a night and then also having a big Lithuanian motherfucker just putting his shoulder into his chest 20 times in the first half. That takes a fucking toll on you, like mentally and physically. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to guard JV in the post. It's the same thing I said with Chet. All right, I said, can Chet guard JV? No. Can JV guard Chet? No. Can Larry guard Chet, no. Can Chet guard Larry? Yes. See, hold up. Before you, I know you're about to to to, to chime okay. in, Chaz. No, go do anything. Go ahead. This is what I mean. That's like they can guard they can guard JV in the first quarter, in the first five minutes. But what happens when that run game consistently happens? When we get in the second, the third quarter, fourth quarter, like bro, oh, and, he, and he's got a couple fouls on him. Oh <laughs> yeah. So the shit. <laughs> It's the running game. This is literally the Baltimore Ravens, the team we have. We have mm. fucking Lamar Jackson and Zion Williamson, and we have uh, Derrick Henry and uh, JV. Like, this is what this shit is. We should play slow, methodical basketball and run when, uh, when it's advantageous. You had 12. Thought, I thought this was beautiful. About, we'll, we'll talk about this point. But they had 12 fast break points in the first half. Boston only gives up 13.4 points off turnovers, right? They had 12 points off turnovers. Boston only gives up 13.4 points off turnovers per game. And I thought they shut that shit down quick in the Mm. third quarter. Like, they couldn't play fast anymore. Like, nope. And I wanted to ask him. I think he just misunderstood what I was trying to say. But they do this thing where, like, say Drew turns the ball over. Our instincts tell us, let's run back on defense, right? Like, we turn that shit over. I, I got to get back. I got to get in the hole, right? They don't do that. The person that turns that ball over or misses, d- does something, they guard the ball initially. They're trying to redirect you, change, make you change sides, run you out of your rhythm because they expect everybody else to get the fuck back. They do a really good job of that. How many times did you see, like, a wide open duck? I saw one. I think that was CJ on the steal. Other than that, that shit was not happening in the second half. So I thought that was that's pretty really, good. About that's, a, that's a really good I, point five. I, um, I want to point this out to shout out to Chung. Um, th- to me, the Celtics, to make matters worse, the Celtics didn't really play well today. Like, by, especially 103 not by points. 
hundred and three hundred four points. They weren't that great. And they're coming off back to back Hawks losses, one being in overtime. Like they're in a bit of a rut right now. So they came the on the road and walk you down and just totally just destroyed during the second half of the game. And the thing is, they had they only had a little bit to do with them beating you. You beat yourself a lot of the times, like in, in this scenario. Like again, there was one play in particular that stood out to me, and it's it's another like kind of it's evidence of a good result from a bad process. Larry's in a dunking spot. I think CJ makes a dish to Larry underneath the basket. Larry does his wraparound pass to Najee. Najee hits the three. I'm happy he hit the three. Great, that was awesome. Najee. I mean, Larry, did you hit a like you in a dunk spot, brother? You hit to like <laughs> dunk, like you hit you the big man here, brother. Like, what, what, what are we doing here? It was a great pass, and he made the shot. Shout out to Najee, but it's like, how many times have we seen you pass up? You pass up that look about five, six times last game, and we got burned for it. Like, come on, like, bro, it's 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 insane at this point. Like, I, I don't understand it at all. Can I tell you what I thought the game changed? Go ahead. I was going to let you. Because five. They scored 11 points. Well, that too. Uh, <laughs> it went back. And look, man, I'm not like this huge podcast guy. But when J.J. Redick and LeBron James are on the same podcast, I'm going to listen. It yeah. goes back to what LeBron said. He's like, I hate the two for one. I hate it. He's like, I despise it. I hate the two for one. Second quarter. We're up three, 36 mm-hmm. seconds left, okay? Mm-hmm. Herb Jones, baseline out of bounds, opposite side. Mm-hmm. Herb Jones comes down full, full like, down, coming downhill. I think there's a flat screen set by maybe Larry. Gets a crease, gets to his left side, but he's going full speed, kind of just out of, just totally wild. Bad shot falls down. Celtics going a five on four back. Porzingis mm-hmm. gets a dunk. We come back down. CJ mm-hmm. starts, to, starts to set real early. I think dumps it off to Larry. Larry gets blocked by Porzingis. Think it whatever it goes out of bounds, whatever happens. Celtics get another possession. Derek White hits a 36 footer. Instead of going up mm-hmm, three, mm-hmm. you go down two. And then you counter it with the same fucking lineup that close or yeah, same lineup that closed with adding Trey. And you score 11 points in the third. I thought that two for one. Kill the momentum for the team. Killed it. Uh, CJ CJ said it, it. It was the one of the turning points in the game because you can't he, do he that. Said that. Yeah, like I somewhere along those lines of, of words. Yes, uh, like he pointed that out in the presser. Like that's like those are moments where you need to be engaged and understanding, like where you have an advantage. I understand two for ones. I I, I totally get them. I really do. But closing out quarters is so pinnacle for a team that doesn't do it well. I don't think you necessarily, although you get another shot, you you should take that that chance because that's a really good team you're doing it against. It's like it's almost like um like Golden State, right? Like in the in their heyday, you can't necessarily take those chances against teams like that because they have so much firepower. They can score literally at will. It's almost better for you to like use clock as your friend because again you're a running team, so you might as well slow play, slow play, and get a really good shot. And if you miss, at least you're getting back on defense rather than you know you're out of position or you're cross matched up on somebody you shouldn't be matched up on, and and they get in the open look. So there's there's a little bit of a growth that is needed by this team mentally. Um, and I don't know if they necessarily have enough time uh, going into the playoffs. I, I think that I think that um, we 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 talk about <clears throat> these issues and and people think you know people hear you speak on this after a loss you know during the season where they're having success and you you know they call it bitching or you being negative or but I guess the point of it is like. You want the team to succeed and, and you want them to stop making stupid mistakes. And when I say no identity, you know, five started talking about this last year. 
So shout out to him. Give him credit. I want to say, I want to say that when I talk about no identity, you don't play Matt Ryan. Oh my god! <laughs> Ever. Oh god! No, this is Ever. crazy. For no reason at all. <laughs> and then you, and then you throw him in the game to guard who? It's back to back games. He's done this shit. Who? Wait, who was he guard? Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Bro, who was at he first guard, he was ma- At first, he was matched up with Peyton Pritchard. JB? It was JB, but he at first, he was matched up with, with Pritchard, and then JB came in. Well, you know, I, I, for me, you know, kind of to in continuance of what Lito was saying, you know, those people who say those things, they can, they can eat a dick po' boy on French, as far as I'm concerned. Fuck them. Fuck their mothers. Fuck them all. Fuck the fucking Diaz brothers. This this fuck them all personally, <laughs> but <laughs> but um yeah but but yeah man it's, it's like it's just like but see here's the crazy part this, and we spoke about this uh I think on the last show it might have been right after the show y'all got to sign up and be members man but uh appreciate all the members we do have um it's like okay Willie um <laughs> you gonna play <laughs> you play Matt Ryan and you played Hawkins. Now that it didn't work, are you going to go away from ever giving them another chance? Like you kind of just it goes out back to the world. point where, like, it goes back to the point where, like, Hawkins and Matt Ryan have to hit a shot. You know how much pressure? Like, it's like you got to make this shot, or you might not play. And to Jordan Hawkins, uh, was it the OKC game he came in and hit three, and then never saw the court again? Was that against yeah, OKC? I think so. So, like, he's like, even if I hit a shot here, I might not get back in the game. It's like throwing Matt Ryan, bro. I got a text on this. Throwing Matt Ryan, he's sitting for two and a half hours. And then real you're time. like, hey, but two and a half, like real time. Yes, two and a half hours. Like, for two and a half months, but go ahead. And then he's thrown into the fourth quarter, back to back games. If you know you need him in the fourth quarter, right? And it's a closed game, whatever. Like, why not give him a couple minutes in the first, late of the first? Early second quarter and see if he can like catch fire. I don't understand that process. You think this is Popovich? What are you talking about? You, you, think, you think we got you? Yeah, it's got to be Popovich, bro. Like it's it's got to be like Byron Scott. Like it's got to be like yeah. it's, it's got to be Ronnie Williams. Like yeah, <laughs> like this is it. Like this this is like stupid JV high school level. Like I like even I'm like all right, you gotta give these guys a couple like a couple minutes to run. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanna I just wanna I sent y'all this, but I just want to read this to the people. In the chat, who's watching the show? Shout out to y'all. We appreciate y'all Saturday night. Y'all in here talking basketball with us. Um, shout out to Will Guillory. Uh, Will's tweet says this. I'm not gonna read the whole first part of the the first tweet, but the second part of this tweet is important. After starting Larry Nance to begin the second half, the Pels went the entire fourth without a center. Right? Okay. So he asked Willie after the game, "What happened? What what is that about?" Willie on this choice, trying to spread them out, play faster, and give Z more space to operate. Playing small is part of our unit that we want to continue to try to look at. They pretty much play all perimeter guys, just seeing if we can match up better with them. Yeah. What do you? When I, when I saw Pazingas, I was like, "Who's that fucking midget out there?" Like, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm I, I'm not sure he was looking at the floor when he said that. I, I I really don't think he even looked at who was in the game. When he said that, they they played. Hold on, let, let let me let me let me let me make sure I got this correct. Y'all remember when I texted y'all to start the second half? Wait, wait, I, like, I said I said uh, no Pazinka seven three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told you, and I told you, guys. He was like, right. Like it's a it layup. <laughs> it was a layup for him. You like? Bro, I, do you, go ahead, Lito. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I just I just want to say this. Porzingis played 31 minutes. Al Hoffer played 30 minutes. Xavier Tillman played 10 minutes. <laughs> I know what you about to say. What? I mean, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Say it. He played nah, half. You might as well say it now, Lito. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> what the fuck are you looking at then? When you t- how, how you how you matching up with them if you're going small? They they literally played two centers sixty one minutes, 
And not, I, mean, I didn't even include Xavier Tillman in that. Who who are you met Justin? Five guys. Who are you matching up with? You so okay. So okay. why are you asking so, us that question? That's an insane question to ask. No, 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 no. Because 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 y'all y'all the only people who can who can. I, I'm not talking to Willie, so I, I just gotta I gotta I gotta ask a question to somebody. Dog, you go centerless. They play two centers. You trying to match zero. up with them. How you matching up with seven three and six ten go with Matt Ryan? We also we we also were out rebounding by twelve tonight. The most the most egregious part, hey, same thing with the OKC game, but the most egregious part is him saying they play a lot of perimeter guys out there. It's like, bro, what, are you lying? Like you lying right now? <laughs> like I saw the game too. <laughs> like what the fuck. Like Chris Stapps like, is more yeah. <laughs> like, like I watched the game. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what the like? I, what the fuck? I, like, I, I get wanting to look. I get wanting to go small and be able to switch one through five. But like, also, <laughs> I don't like. Then at the same time, like, I don't get it. Like, I, 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 I don't understand why. I don't know. Actually, I just and the weird thing is you going small against like. Like abnormally large centers, like <laughs> like my fucking like, small as Chet Holmgren. Like these guys are literally yeah. over seven feet tall. Yo, the rim. This is the, the my hand is the rim. These motherfuckers' hand is like right, right, right fucking here. This, oh. What are you doing? Like I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Right. Look, y'all, y'all ask us questions. We're uh, y'all are kind of driving the show. Make sure you smash the like button. Go ahead, five. Nah, I was gonna tell you, uh, we need to talk about the bench, man. Twelve points from your bench. I mean, how many minutes did Hawkins play? Seven. Uh, seven. You yeah. say Leo? Seven, seven twenty-eight. Seven minutes twenty-eight seconds. Yeah, I get more run than that, man. Well, I mean, he misses first two shots. Shad. Look, when I when Hawk misses his first shot, I know it's over. It's yeah, over. Because then the kid's night. thinking he's like, "Oh, well, fuck this!" Like, it, it, it's over. What did um, Najee do tonight? Uh, Najee him. two for four. He had a couple big threes. He was he fine. He had five rebounds. He yeah, he did his job. He was fine. He did, yeah. Um, hey, dog, that dude, that dude from the corner, bro, like, like Herb Jones. Yeah, Herb was nice. From my yeah. Uh, what four nine? Four, four nine. nine. Yeah, man. Yeah, four that's nine. impressive. And you know what? He had one, but again, toe, toe was on the line. He was yeah. oh, five he for always ten. does that. Yeah. Sad, and, um, and, he, and he had five rebounds. That's impressive. That's yeah. impressive. Her had, a, her had a real good game. He had five yeah. rebounds against two centers on the court for 61 yeah. minutes. Ain't that crazy? And and Jason Tatum, this motherfucker, he he looked like a center. Like Dog. they Tatum, yo, they say him. <laughs> that was a big Bro. cool pause. Oh, he called that, that Yeah. Dog. Dog. Like, like, I don't know how you block. Like, there's really not a bad shot for that dude. He's no. 6'10. Yeah. And then his like his release is so high. She, she the, yeah. Bro, yeah. like what it what do you do? And and I think Herb did a really good job. Matter of fact, I thought Trey at times did a good job. Zion. They, right? I think they did his best thing anyone's gonna Hold do. Up. I got you. Hold up. I got you. Hold up. You want to talk about? You want to talk about cookies? That was, that was almost cookies. He almost got him on that steal. Yeah. Like, like you're not hunting Zion no more. This is why I think it doesn't necessarily mean you have to play Larry as much. Right, 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 right. All right. Especially when Trey Trey rebounded the ball pretty well. Like. What are you at nine rebounds? <laughs> like <laughs> the scotch. Oh yeah, we're all we all. <laughs> Get the scotch out. He's going <laughs> the hard stuff. <laughs> but on the real, it's like, but I think the elephant in the room is that I don't think Larry would allow you to not play him. Stop. And stop. that's stop. where the issue comes. What do you mean no, stop? Justin, Justin, no, I mean, I mean, talk about it. I mean, talk about it, but stop. Like, no. Like, I know. Honestly, I, like, I'm stop, just saying bro. it's. Like, talk about it. Like, that's fine. I'm like, but like, what? Look, man. I agree, superstars Justin. have say. Like if Herb Jones wants his like, organization, it's hold up. If Herb Jones wants to switch a defensive assignment, you switch it because Herb Jones knows like he's all NBA first team, whatever, all out otherworldly. 
If Zion Williamson wants to scratch a play and is like, hey, and calls his own number, you do it. Okay? It's that simple. When your eighth guy says something, no. I'm sorry. You listen. No, nah, man. You listen Look, I respect it. Absolutely not. Okay? <laughs> Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCollum. Those are your three guys. Okay? If CJ wants to call his number, fine. Brandon wants to call his number, fine. Zion wants to call his number, fine. Herb Jones wants to switch up a defensive assignment, fine. That's it. You know, you know what's funny, though? That's it. it. Was, and it should and be what, it. And what was telling Zion after the last game, he's like, when Herb said, yo, let's blitz him, he said, I thought for a second, let me ask coach. And yeah. I was like, nah, let me just do what Herb nah. said. <laughs> you listen to Herb. You listen to Herb. You listen to Herb. <laughs> like, but, like I, I, I can't. That's what I don't understand, though, man. Like, I, I, maybe does y'all think really Larry actually has some influence on him starting the second half? Like, yes. Yeah. Then why doesn't JV? J, why, why does JV not have that then? I think, JV, I think he don't play no games. He don't play games. He a professional, and it's probably a, a bit of a language barrier and stuff like that, political stuff. But JV just again, and Larry has the benefit of still being on the contract. A guy like JV, you know, he he fighting for his meals right now. You know, um, it's an unfortunate situation, man. Just because, uh, <laughs> look at Kai. Shout out to Kai, man. Kai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an unfortunate up, situation. Just because it's no. like again, you're not even giving the guy an opportunity to fail. Truthfully, even if you were going to do what you did tonight. Cody Zeller probably would have been a better option just to have like some rebounding out there or a motherfucker who might actually dunk. Cause nope, like Larry's just like afraid in the fort for whatever reason. I, I don't know, man. He's afraid in the fourth. Oh, I mean, because in the He's first afraid half, this first on the first, but see, in the first half, he, he shot, he had a nice uh lay in. He seems like a guy who. Hit, like he's it's constantly on the turbo button in the first half. By the second half, he just looked like a uh, corpse out there a lot, a lot of times. This is why I blame the coaching staff, bro. Like, this is why my whole purpose about this is, like, Larry shouldn't be the guy we should be talking about right now. Like, he shouldn't be. Like, the, the fact that JV only had five shots tonight isn't because Larry played X amount of minutes. Right. It's not. It's because the coaching staff thought – that that was the better option. Like, there are times where Larry Nance should be playing. Yeah, there are. But if you played him less when he's not supposed to and played him more when he was supposed to, we wouldn't be having this issue. That's the that's the real problem. I don't know if he has influence on the coach. It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. Like, hey, bro, this is what we're going to do. Like, we got it. You just play. And that's that's all it should be. Like I, I I don't see why JV has these games where he has five shots in a game, and and one of them is a fucking three pointer. Like what are we doing here? Did he even shoot a free throw? He he didn't even shoot a free throw tonight. Oh, you know what's crazy? <laughs> Larry had five shots. <laughs> it's just like yo, what are we doing? See, listen. <laughs> hey, 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 check this out. Bro, I hate this shit for JV because JV was having a great year. No, he was no. balling. He was, he was balling. having a great year. Like, there's no reason this shit this should be happening right now to him, especially when you you got a guy he don't short he don't shortcut the game. He played every offseason people basketball. He's in shape year round. He a he a true teammate. You know what I'm saying? He does everything that's asked of him, and you you you. You do what you get 15 fucking minutes, man, against a set again, seven, three, and six ten. A team that and, and Xavier Tillman six nine against a team that plays centers. I don't, don't think do y'all, do y'all think JV could guard Al Horford. I think I think one of us could probably give Al Horford a little resistance at this stage. Right. <laughs> so yeah. This in the go ahead, Jared. No, no, no. I'm just gonna say, let me let me look at this. They they shot 37 threes, right? How many of them were pick and pop threes? Right? Like how many of them like that's the that's the one like Tatum hit the dagger. Tatum, was it Tatum that hit the rub three but, screen? Yeah. I, I'm saying like like with the, the big shooting the three. No. Right. Yeah, right. Like, that, it was just poor that, zigs at the top of the key. That's all it was. Right. When you're in drop, or that's Horford the in one the that, corner cover. When you, corner, when sorry. You're, yeah, when you're in drop, that's the one that gets you. Right, it's not necessarily 
like JB's man is killing him. It's like, all right, you in drop. So you, if you don't switch, then your man, you know, Porzingis is 7 3 and he can shoot. That this would be the team that he would should struggle against. You didn't even give JB a chance to struggle against this team. It was like, let's automatically go to JV and I mean go to go to Larry. And then Larry has a good first half, but I guess he expounded like all his energy then. Like we not, you know what I'm saying? We're not being uh very methodical about how we go about the lineups and how we go about playing certain matchups. Like it's all predestined or premeditated about how we're gonna do it, and we're just sticking to that. Like nothing changes, like basketball isn't fluid. It's crazy. it's concrete. It's crazy. It it it's it's predictive coaching. You you play prevent. You you you're literally stopping your player from succeeding because in the first seven minutes of a game, you scripted that Porzingis is going to be better than JV, and and maybe he is. Okay, cool. Well, he so got it first. He got to prove right. it, dog. And and man, and that man a hooper, dog. Like at the end of the day, you know, like if you want to flow with somebody, dog, and they scoring on you or or they playing better than you, they are taking that shit. Per- you gonna take that shit personal. You go. You gonna want to get your get back, like that Marshawn quote, right? I might get got, but I'm gonna get me. At some point, like you just gotta let him get him. He did literally two nights ago. Hey, bro, you know when it changed for me when it when it was happening. JV picks up an offensive foul on like on the, on the swing, yeah. and I was like, they about to pull him. I just knew it. Like that was he, the first quarter, right? Five. Yeah, it was in the first quarter, man. That was that was when they play. were up twenty one thirteen. I'm like, why would like like why are you subbing Larry in now? Like y'all are playing a good brand of basketball. CJ's got it going. You're getting open looks. Zion Williamson was four for fucking four with the free throw attempt. Hey, you know what? Bef- there was so much space in that first quarter. Like, I was really proud to see it. Like, there really was a lot of a lot of space to operate. Uh, what, ha- <clears throat> what happened? Uh, what happened? Trey they, were found- that, they were on that down screen dribble handoff where CJ was coming off the top and curling, and it was either, like, it was great fucking action. I'm like, this, I'm like, and whoa. It, I was like, was, whoa. That's after a couple transition looks. Uh, Trey finds CJ with a left-handed pass. Herb Jones starts the fucking game off with a steal. Let's let's start there. Deflex it. Deflex it. They go on a break. Zion gets a layup. Okay, the wheels are turning. Herb ends up with a three in a corner. Trey finds CJ on the right wing. Like, there's so many things happening. And then you start to execute in the half court, right? Even if you miss the shots, you're getting the shots that you want. That's the thing that I wanted to see. Now, can we see that brand of basketball, the one we saw in the first quarter, for four quarters consecutively. That's what I would love to see because that team in the first quarter could get to the Western Conference final. That team playing that yep. way. Yep. And this, but this it all, I'm sorry, ahead, go ahead. Richard. No, I'm just saying oh, no, I'm just, it always reverts back to the to the team we saw in the third quarter. It always does. I was thinking about kind of like the conversation we had with uh Chris and to um I'm sorry, who just if somebody sends a super chat, uh, Don David, I'm sorry, David. And it was like, <clears throat> when you say lawyer expectations, I think it depends, right? Depends on what your expectations are because this mm-hmm. team can do sh- certain shit. It's not like a, a lot of the ills of the team, s- some of it is personnel, but it's like you don't have to play that personnel, right. like you can, you can, <laughs> you can like remedy <laughs> it with other shit. So that would like totally change like the expectations, right? Um, I think even look, man, Larry, even as it, with his history as a Pelican, has had some good stretches of games. He absolutely has. And it's a five's point. Larry isn't the reason that you should want to lose games. Absolutely isn't. And um, I just think when you have such a huge coaching disadvantage, it's like you can't even – it's almost like you got to play per, a perfect game from start to finish. With the Pelicans, like, we kind of know the recipe with them versus uh, moderate to good teams. And let's not even talk about great teams, but, like, moderate to good teams. Pelicans have a build a huge lead, 
and just survive the rest of the survival, <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, with the Pelicans, like if they're down two at half, it's like the game over. Like, like the game, the game, the game is over for, for this Pelicans. They are they are 0 and 18. They are 0 and 18. 19, 0 and 19 no, trailing. <laughs> Wait, yeah. well, before I get, I, I, I got to do the DraftKings thing. So look, we're fifty-five oh. minutes in. We'll, as okay. long as you have questions, comments, uh, I got to play a DraftKings uh, read and then make sure I'll smash that like button. The NBA season is in full swing, and when I can't get enough of the action on the court, I spice things up by betting on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers can bet five bucks and get one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Boot. New customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Boot. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler or visit one eight hundred Gambler dot net. In New York, call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y or text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg dot org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, twenty one and over. Age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire one hundred sixty eight hours after issuance. See dkng dot com slash promos for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gaming resources appreciate DraftKings also presented by company bar located 4600 for red street um let's see uh from thomas appreciate you thomas will willie cost this team the playoffs or the playoffs underperform it's a very quite interesting question um like i, I wanted to ask us so like we were talking we we're, we're our tech star was kind of going off in the third quarter like, do y'all think that was a coaching problem or also like players not executing and making shots? Or was it a little bit of both? Um, because JV did come in and the offense still was kind of not necessarily stagnant, but they weren't hitting shots. I mean, you scored 11 points in 12 that, minutes. At that point, the, the um, pressure by the Celtics had increased. Like, right, like they, they, they came out with an energy that was like, okay, you, you're going to have to match just to beat us. And the Pelicans didn't exceed it. Now that could be twofold. That could be on the players. And that also can be on uh, the coaching staff. But also you didn't remedy, remedy that by um, doing anything that, you know, strategically that right. could have, you know, deterred the Celtics or, or changed the Celtics. Like you couldn't get out in fast breaks. They were changing that. You couldn't be, if if teams don't turn the ball over, how do the Pelicans win? That's my that's my question that I'm gonna ask. Like, they're not really a great half court team, so when teams take care of the ball and don't allow you to get in, get in transition and run and make shots, how are you gonna beat them? It can't be give the ball to Zion, give the ball to CJ, give the ball to Brandon, and go save me. It has to be somewhere. Uh, uh, of someone drawing a line to say, okay, we're going to have to out scheme a team where we're just going to like, like it's chess. Like you have no other moves. When do we see that, Justin? When do we see a team just, this team just out scheme another one? I think, I, I, I think the, I think the problem is regardless of who's playing or who's not playing, if you had a, if you had a particular, um, if you had a phone, that, if you had an identity, it really wouldn't matter who was in the game. If Larry Nash is playing, um, and you know who Bi is missing, right? You would run the same stuff. the The problem is day to day. You don't know what team, what offense. Yo, they was doing shit in the first quarter. I have never seen them do before. I, I was like, who, <laughs> the dribble handoff team? thing. I was like, that's new. I was like, that is way like I in game seventy two. Well, you want to start. You want to start adding stuff for the playoffs, but you don't like usually run it in games. You like you practice it, and then you have it in for the playoffs. Justin, Th- that was Justin, what you said today. Yeah, that that would only make sense if you had like a, a stable foundation of who you are. Right. So when we like, see we're gonna do this every day, right? <laughs> when we see something like, oh wow, this is this is cool. Like, why don't you do this all the time? You know they went away from that action. Oh yeah, they just completely went away from that action. Uh, it was what CJ. So CJ started on the baseline, and there was like a down screen, and then into a dribble handoff from the top of the key, and then you had two shoes in the corners. 
you had JV rolling, and then the dude that set the first screen was lifting, right? Yeah, and I think they they stopped that by pressuring the ball, and then they blitz the after CJ like did the throw. They, they so they blitz. Yeah. So your job you, though, your job is when once you get two on the ball, Jarrett. Once you get, get two off. on the ball. This is not a good passing team, and, and I think Joe Mazzula knows that. Like, they're not a good like passing out of trouble team. They'll dribble out of it or try to, and they don't. Sw- and they're not a good shooting team. So it's almost like Joe Mazzula wants that to happen. Like, okay, you're gonna get a corner three with a guy that we want shooting a three. Good luck. What are they? What What are they? What is the foundation of this team though? Like, what is the thing that they can? Be like, hey, at the end of the day, we gonna do this well. Energy, Some... effort, force, compassion. Joy. Every kiss begins with K. <laughs> like, yeah, commercial um, still going on. <laughs> oh, <interesting. laughs> <That thing's... laughs> Every kiss begins with K. That's like, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, that's the best jingle of all time. I'm like, damn, that's clever. <laughs> it's so <laughs> simple. But it really like... it's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. Like, why didn't I think it? Like, that's just one of those. But um, wait, can I, I, can I bring man. this up, Chaz? I was gonna say this because this is uh, by the way, Mavericks a half a game back. I remember mm-hmm. we all flipped out after we lost that back to back second game against the Mavericks. I was like, You're freaking out. I'm like, Well, if you would have won that game, you would have had the tiebreaker over the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Now, the Mavericks are a half a game behind you, and they got the easiest schedule in the NBA. Meanwhile, you got Phoenix. You got, um, yeah, I'm sorry, you got Phoenix, you got Orlando, then you got Twice. San Antonio, Orlando again, or I'm sorry, Phoenix again, you got uh, Portland, then you got Golden State, then you got the Lakers. Am I missing I counted, a game there? I counted two games that I think the Willie Green Pelicans should be favored in, those being the Detroit Pistons game. And the Portland Trailblazers game, because I, I think the way Wimby been playing as of late, nah, I, I, don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Wait, so we don't it, play the Pistons again, right, Chaz? We don't play the Pistons. Yeah, yeah we do. We play the Pistons and the Blazers. That's to me. That's sure? my two gimme games. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. No, we are, we already paid the shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We played the Spurs. The Kings. Yeah, that's an t- I'm telling you. Yeah. So to me, um. I don't know. I mean, the Kings just lost Malik Monk and uh, Herder, so I don't. I mean, it's sad. You shouldn't be counting your money this early, but I guess you can consider that maybe a possibly a dub. But um, I think other than that Portland game, every I don't know if I would consider the Pelicans favored in any game. Like them winning that Bucks game kind of neutralized the OKC loss a bit. But now it's like, man, <laughs> like I don't know. It's, it's like um, putting tobacco on a bing, bee sting. That's that's what yeah. that feels like. Yeah, exactly. It's hey, like, it's doing something. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, they got they have Phoenix, Orlando, Spurs, Phoenix again at Phoenix. You go to Portland, Kings, Golden State, Lakers. Like what does what does the last eight games look like? Uh the Pelicans are at what 45 and 29. I don't know if they're gonna get to 50, bro. I don't think so. Look, that's what that's what I said on the show the other day. I was like, no. Nah. But they can. They can. They can. I think I w- all you gotta do is uh <laughs> yeah. You gotta not all you gotta do, but I think sitting Larry down, resting him for the playoffs is a good start. Uh, I really do because I think even if even if they do end up at six, let's say they avoid the play in, you do have to also consider that other teams. If you're if you're Denver, you probably don't want to play like the Kings. Maybe well the Kings fucked up now, so maybe you don't care. But if you're Denver, you probably like, nah, I like exactly where we are. I, I like exactly where Whoa. we are. Hey, can I, I ask y'all this? Pelican. Can I ask y'all this? If Go they ahead. if they make the seven seed, say they fall all the way to the seven seed, right? Say they fall to the seven seed. Look, Chaz, you call, call me crazy, bro. Dallas, oh, man, Dallas so on the up and up Phoenix. You got to win that Phoenix game. You got to win, win that Phoenix game. If they fall to the seven seed, what do y'all... Who's the eight seed right now? Is it the Kings uh, or the Lakers? 
Oh, let me see. Let's see. The eighth seed is Damn, the Kings, dude. but the Lakers gonna probably get that. You tra- look. It's a seven eight game. The Pels are at home, and LeBron James and Anthony Davis come to the Smoothie King Center. Do you feel good about that game? Nah, LeBron I James. I don't, want, I, don't want, I don't want it. I don't want no smoke with. I and say it. okay. <laughs> and say so. You lose no. that game, right? And just say Houston and or Golden State versus Sacramento. You went to the winner of that game at home. The only team I think we really want to play is Sacramento, the Clippers. <laughs> oh, the Clippers? Like, yeah, that's like uh, the only yeah. team I think we got like a hell, like a snowball chance in hell against. Because, like, as bad as the Suns look in a regular season, again, when it comes to the playoffs, you have to be the best player. You have to have the best two players on the court every night. For at least four games, God, Curry and LeBron. If Curry and LeBron came in back to back, oh no, nah, that would, well, that's kind of crazy. That's that's pretty that's crazy. crazy. That's pretty that's crazy. crazy. No, that's wild. Yeah, that's pretty insane. I oh, thank the Lord. I oh, thank Coach Harbaugh. Fucking love you, man. Love the shit out of you, man. <laughs> Le- that's fine. <laughs> can, hey, uh, can I ask you yeah. Let me um. Let me ask y'all how how much like I dang, the word credit just then got totally uh. <laughs> you can't give it no more, Chaz. You can't yeah. give it no more. How oh, how wow. much how much um benefit of doubt do you give this team due to some of the in, the injury issues? Like, well, you know, they banged up right now. Maybe they would have beat certain teams if help. Well, I know where you're going with this, Chaz. I know where you're going with this. No, I'm just asking because OKC is a tough team and Boston's a tough team. So I'm just asking. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I give it no credit. Go ahead, bro. No, I'm about to say no. I don't because I don't like the process. Like I, I don't. Whether it's a win or a loss, like I'm still pissed about why this shit looked like this. Like. I can't be happy about it. People like, oh, you, you know, when we win, you don't say nothing. Shit, like we don't. We say the same thing. It really is crazy. And then and it'd be, you know, it'd be fucked up. It's like people be like, oh man, them dudes been saying that when somebody else says it. Like, fuck, what? Who cares if they, like, we've been, we watched the games, they, this dude from Boston, his first time looking at the game, he like, why the fuck are they playing Larry and Ness over fucking JV? Like, dude, we wondering that shit too. We want to know Cleveland. Oh, no, we're here. Common sense ain't so common, yo. It ain't the, so common. The guy, the guy from Cleveland, or after the first game, he was like, uh, no, Memphis, the dude from Memphis, he was like, Man, something's weird with those Pelicans. <laughs> People's like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, <laughs> Chris Vernon. Yeah, they had a team meeting two weeks later. <laughs> hey, let me, let me ask y'all a question. If they if they get into, regardless, playing in playoffs, whatever, going into next season, I just, I was talking about this on Twitter. Do you, do you think that they basically bring the same team back? What's the question? Say that again. To, do we have to? Do we have to talk about that? You want to talk about that now? Yeah. Why not? I mean, I mean you got something. You got something else to do. <laughs> oh, I, I got something we can talk about. Not to like bypass the little question, but I got something we can talk about. <laughs> but I, this, this one, this one, no, no offense, Leo. This one been pissing me off. We got tons of time to talk about yours. All right. But this one been pissing me off. Ooh. Bro, I went and watched a Pelicans versus Celtics game today. And there was a sea of fucking green throughout the Smoothie King Center. Yeah. Like it was apparent from the moment the doors opened. Let's go. Like, Celtics champ we, broke out in the fourth. Like, what are we oh, yeah, doing? Are serious? Uh, are you thinking of lying? Oh, oh, a loud you, let's go Celtics. You, you ever been like, a Golden State game, Chaz? You ever, you ever seen the Golden State game? Now? I mean, I be, but, but Boston? It's like it's a you know it's a big uh, a huge Irish, yeah, Irish yeah yeah that's true yeah. too yeah like but the thing is like 
you know, people always get upset when people talk bad about this team or the city. Like, but y'all don't even fucking show up on a Saturday, like for a, for a basketball game. <laughs> A matinee like, basketball game. A matinee <laughs> basketball game. You don't even fucking show up for it. So why do you think people don't respect you or don't fucking t- – like, who cares? Like, well, when Kendra Perkins yeah. talks about the city, everybody want to come out the woodworks. But you don't show up on a day-to-day basis. You're not – I mean, I'm not trying to sell you the team here. I don't get paid for that shit. But that shit embarrassing, dog. Like, what is, what is going bad. on? Yeah. You mean – You mean tell me you don't – you mean to tell me you don't get paid over fifty thousand dollars to talk about the team? Yeah, man. Nah, a bunch of forty year olds. Yeah, bunch of forty year olds. <laughs> Dang. Dang. I ain't lying. If I'm still a like, fan of this team at forty, then I we, we ain't got no ring. I'm going. I'm, I'm taking matters into my own hands around this bitch. I'm yo, I'm gonna hop off. But if y'all want to keep going, do y'all want to keep going? That was crazy, bro. That's crazy. I, I mean, Jesus. Yeah, Christ. Do y'all want to keep continuing the show? Do y'all want to keep? So it's on. It's on y'all. I don't got nothing to do, dog. I'm, I'm, I'm cooling. I, I was just gonna say, like, all right, I fellas, good seeing y'all. All right, big dog. Appreciate y'all. Happy Easter. Th- See y'all later. Happy Easter, bro. Be safe. I was just gonna say, I think to Files point, a lot of the casuals still haven't really embraced the team like that. Like even yeah. on Twitter, I see some people I know who like they fuck with the Saints heavy, but yeah. now that football kind of eh, and they don't look like the Saints got no real promising prospects going on. They starting to pay a little more attention to the Pelicans, and it's like, well, shit. When they start paying attention, you end up losing. Like you know, it's right. so you kind of yeah. lost the goodwill that some of the people were giving you, and um. I don't know, man. Well, we just, just in general, like we do a lot of, we do a lot of, a lot of jack riding sometimes. Like for us with the, the yeah. national, like whoever winning at the time. Like again, it, yeah, you that. might see a bunch of, you might see a bunch of LeBron jerseys. You might see a bunch of this motherfucking jersey, this team jersey, that team jersey, and you just like, you got a whole fucking team right here, like this support team. But Duh. Yeah, when that, yeah. when when Steph, when Steph hit that shot over AD. In the playoffs, that yeah, I was sitting, Lord. I was sitting like in the three hundreds, and this black man from New Orleans, I know he's from New Orleans, right? He's got a Steph Curry jersey on, and I ain't tripping off that. That's cool, <laughs> but he right. turned around, he talked shit to me. I almost threw this man off the third. Like, dog, don't fucking play, <laughs> don't, don't, fuck out here, don't play with me, dog. <laughs> the, 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 don't don't do that. Like, don't do that. I'm I'm mad as hell. He made that shot, dog. Like. <laughs> Couldn't believe he made that shit. But all in a, I still got nightmares about that shot. But I hate that we, I hate that we do that shit, bro. Well, motherfucker, born and raised on Saratoga, he, he gonna stand up and say the fuck y'all thought this was. Shut <laughs> stuff. He like, what you doing? Dog, nah, blow your mama house up, dog. Chill, dog. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Fuck out. Like, you know <laughs> I get it, bro. Cause at, at one point I was I wasn't even like a Saints fan, but again, I ain't from New Orleans, so this is like a different thing. But like I wasn't like I wouldn't go to the Saints game and be like, y'all trash. Like, I what what do I gain from that? Like that What's the point of going? Like at that yeah, you know. Son. But that's that shit, that shit was like really like not demoralizing, but you could just see the energy like. They cheering when Zion miss a free throw. Like, what the fuck is going on? Damn. Like, what? Who crib is it? You I can't know what I'm saying? Like, that bad. Damn, yeah, bro. It was. Yeah. Was bad, he bro. he had a wild day at the line, too. Seven, seven for 14. Yeah, that was rough. He left like, a lot of points on the board. At one point, like his last couple of games, last to me, for him, dog, five misses got to be the max. And that's, yeah. that's pushing it. Like five gotta be the max. You can't never miss seven. Like, would you? That that to, cause that's getting to the point where you change the entire dynamic of a game. It's like seven points is kind is crazy. But like, I'm just happy that he got 14 shots yeah, at the man. line. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe he just wasn't used to shooting that many. But nah, Corey, I'm not. I'm from Hammond, dog. Um, Hammond, yeah. America. Him, him playing 40 minutes too. That's a good. Like, that's some positives to take, bro. But it's just like. Still, it's like, how can't we? We just the, the game never felt like it was in threat. Like no. toward the end, you never felt like oh the Pelicans mounting the comeback. It's just like, nah, it's because you because you've never seen it before, right? It's like, yeah, like how can we expect to come back, pause, like who to make a comeback 
and we've never seen it. It's it's fool's gold. Like you no. can't think like that ain't going it just not the, the thing is it's not just gonna magically happen in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Man, after that's that third true. after that third quarter, <laughs> like I just knew I'm like, that's game, dog. That's game, dog. That ain't ain't no way. Once I saw that, bro, I, I, I knew it was over. Once I saw like that starting lineup, I said the game, y'all, y'all already trailing. This yeah. is one thing when you got a lead, you might kind of like jab and keep them, you know, keep them back a little bit. But you trailing yeah. against a team that loves to shoot threes, a team that's like way more physically imposing than you, and you still ain't, like, you know, you still went out there with that lineup. You ain't try to even the odds or nothing. So uh, I don't know. Who from Kenna, Rachel? Rachel, who, who from Kenna? Yeah. yeah, she is sitting there. She's old law from Kenna. Who the who? Uh, <laughs> I know. Well, nah, man. Nah, but it, the, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. To, no, no, I'm about to say, like, it really is like like the Ravens, bro. Like, it really is a football analogy. Like, if they, if they not up, like, they can't, they can't beat you. Like, the Pelicans won't win. Mm-hmm. They don't have the ability to come back from a deficit. This is not their style of play. Joe from Kenna. Oh, child Joe. Child of Joe. Kenna Joe. What's up, Kenna Joe? Kenna City. Kenna Joe, that's great. You got to change your name, Joe. Yeah. DC. <laughs> so, let me so let me ask y'all this. I, one of y'all, some, I think um, it might have been Chris or somebody in the, in the chat had asked, when y'all think Brandon come back? Uh, they said two to four weeks, up. right? Yeah. When that happened against Magic, Magic, that was on the twenty first. Uh, I would have said on the third against the Magic, but I don't know. Um, well, wouldn't that be some weird uh, karma? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm gonna wait to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I probably the Spurs or anything. That's the fifth. That makes sense. Fifth of April, because you don't want to return against so Phoenix on the road or Trailblazers. Damn, so yo. Go ahead. If he returned <laughs> on the fifth, right? Let Let's say he returned on the fifth, uh, and the Pelicans got. Man, I'm trying to see what the schedule is or who the Pelicans play. But wait, the, well, I get no more, no more. Y'all right? They did say two to four weeks. Yeah. So after that, you play the Suns the next game, and damn, I think he should come back on the ninth for real. Play the Suns the next game because once Devin Booker see him, it is over. But on ninth, yeah, uh, <laughs> all right. So damn, that's a tough time to come back because you got the, you got the Suns right after that, a must win. Then you got Portland, which is like a gimme. Well, should be a gimme game. You got the Kings, which, yeah. in my opinion, should be a gimme. And you got it's, um, it's gonna be one of those two games, Chaz. Do you think Portland or the Kings? Yeah, I think it should be Portland. I'm a, I'm gonna say the eleven. The eleven, the Kings. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna say the eleven. Ooh, that's tough. That's your, oh shit, y'all know we play the Warriors on the back to back. Yeah. Ooh, it's gonna get real. Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 they, they, they need them games, right? Oh, they, yeah, they, they not, you know, because Houston right there. Like, Houston nipping that motherfucking heels. Damn, Houston won 11 straight, yo. Like, that's, that's crazy. He may, he may nice, bro. You, like, yeah. if you just looking at, like, them, okay, you, you might think, like, ah, uh, they just got a bunch of guys. No, no, no. Like the stuff that they they trying to do, it didn't look good in the beginning because it was missing. Yeah. But what they're trying to do, like it makes a lot of sense. And, and Moose Moon kind of like out, kind of opened up more space. And now it's what, like, what do you what do you do if you're them? Like, what do you do if you if you're Houston? Like, do you move Sangoon? You gotta move one of them. You yeah, gotta, yeah, you gotta go, yeah, and, and you gotta roll with what you got. Like the, you don't, what they went eleven straight. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't switch it up now. I think you, you got only reason I and see they, they in a good spot only because neither Sagoon nor Jalen should get no rookie max extension. Like they probably should get a like 
30 would be high to me. Like, just because Jalen didn't had a shitty career, really. Like, before yeah. this, this yeah, stretch yeah. of games. And Sagoon is like, you was a borderline all star, but you kind of like second year. You know, y'all know Sagoon only 21. Bro, yeah, dog. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no, bro. bro. This, I, yeah, go ahead. You got no, nah, I was just about to say, I, 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 I make, bro, that was my exact words. Make that call, get him, get him bro. here, bro. Remember, <laughs> look, me, we had did the uh redraft, mm -hmm. Chris chose who Chris chose number one. I forgot, damn. That's that show the, the fact that, that show came yeah, from, from that year, from that year draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Chris, Chris had the number one pick. Who the fuck did he choose? God damn, man, it's in my notes somewhere. But we was like, oh, hold on. bro, are you crazy? Sing, say, go number one, boy. Is oh. you like I do was that sixteen, dog. It might have been seventeen, if I'm not mistaken. Oh man, like that dude, that's crazy, bro. Like to me, when you talk about players like international players who have professional experience, that's why I don't give that's why I don't give Dyson no type of like pass because I'm like, bro, this is an international player who has professional experience. You're an international player who has professional experience. You can't just come into the league with no type of transferable skills whatsoever, like on offense, like Sagoon be getting. This motherfucker be getting 40, 20, and like seven, 40, 20, and 12. Like, I don't know. I, I think, see, if they didn't have to pay both of them, they probably would be straight. But the fact that they got to pay both of them and both yeah. of their extensions kick in at the same time. Yeah. Woo, yeah, I call it about Sagoon. Me, that answers a lot of questions. Maybe uh, they shouldn't have paid Fred, though. Nah, that was, a, that was okay to do that. I know. Oh, well. Uh, his contract expiring this offseason, Lito. Oh, for real? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, well, he's an expiring his last year, this upcoming offseason, he pretty much a 40 million expiring because his final year is a team option. So, you know, whoever trade for him, they, they cutting that boy easy. So it's but well, man, the Rockets can be real good See, though. Hey, you know what's crazy though? Dyson, this Dyson first game back in how long? A couple uh, months, right? A couple months. couple months, and he come he his first game back, like against fresh the off Celtics. the boat against yeah. the Celtics. His first That's game rough. back, he he got more minutes than Hawkins. That's crazy. If That's you crazy. if you one of them dudes, you almost gotta ask yourself, what more can I do? Like at, at this point, because Hawkins, a rookie who sent like him and JV didn't won games. Games. They won games. Like yo, you, you Chaz, you know, you know, I mean, I've been thinking about something you said in that members only mm -hmm. show. And I don't really want to repeat it because mm -hmm. to me it was a members only show. But I agree with you. I never looked at it like I think it's a possibility this offseason. They probably could make a move on Hawkins. Because yeah. clearly they don't value him. And to me, the, the thing, the only hope I got with that situation is that Willie hasn't been extended yet. And to me, when you look at games like this and games against like really good teams, really good teams, look at what happened OKC, you look at like these meltdowns, because that 0 and 8, 0 and 19 is a staggering number, bro. I think they got to move on from Willie, bro. You got – and even right now, the teams ain't really playing how – as good as it is right now, as far as like in the first halves or first quarters, this ain't how Willie really want to play. You know, so I don't know. I, I think I think you can see Hawkins in the shape type situation if push came to shove. I, I, I was thinking about the Singoon thing. Like, the only thing I can think of is, like, if you match him with Zion, this is purely hypothetical. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you like, it looks like Joker and Aaron Gordon. But, the, I, like, a, like, a better version of Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Like, a, a higher skill set. Mm -hmm. like, like, 
it would be a no brainer. And then you got, you, but you also you have to get like a like a guard that could. Yeah, you got your real point guard. Like a real point guard. I don't know who that is, but let me ask y'all this. Let me ask y'all this. It's totally hypothetical, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That hypothetical. So if, <laughs> we should have a show name totally. Yeah, it's totally hypothetical. <laughs> so if if you hit the Rockets, right? You hit the Rockets. You like look. I see y'all situation. What's the goon? How about this? How about X player, right? Mm -hmm. For Sagoon and Fred Van Fleet just to make the salaries work, right? Now here's the thing: you can keep Fred Van Fleet as an expiring, or you can flip him to a third team as an expiring. But you got Fred Van Fleet if it boiled down to it. So who asks for my question is who asks for picks in that situation? Does the rocket say, yo, I right, well hold on. My dude, you know, he about to get a rookie extension. His his money ain't gonna be nowhere near with your people money about to be and Fred expiring soon. We need some picks. Or if you the if you the Pelicans, do you say, well, I'm arguably giving up. He would. I don't think he the, the the best or second best player in this trade. So I, I'm gonna need some picks. So which, which team gets the picks in this scenario to y'all? The Rockets get the picks. I agree. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, so we all say, yeah. I I feel like so Fred is averaging a career high to assist this year. Oh shit! Damn Fred. And and he's a really good defender. Yeah, he and he can shoot the three. Off the dribble, yeah. Andy Clutch. And a great leader. He a champion, too. And he light skin. And yeah. He, <laughs> he averaging 8.1 assists a game. Like, he averaging Man. one. He averaging, he averaging basically 1.5 turnovers. He he shooting 38 from three. I think this offseason, um, like, the Pels got some answers. I mean, they got some questions they got to answer. Like, you might, you might have to – might be this might be the year you you move off CJ also. Like, I, me, to me, I think in the off season I give CJ a chance to go get a ring somewhere, and like in the immediate, just because this is probably CJ last payday really like this current contract for a big bread, and the direction we trying to go in, I don't really think I think CJ by next year I think CJ a six man. By next year, I mean probably just because if you can't get us a, a number two that's head and shoulders better than CJ, you kind of forcing him into a role he don't need to be in at this stage of his career. Like you know, especially well, by next year. You know what's fucked up? CJ should be a catch and shoot. Like realistically, right now he should just be like he shouldn't have to create. Yeah, he shouldn't have to. Not at this like, point. Like you're the fact that you're requiring him to create is almost I'm not saying it is, but it's almost like shaving years off of him because you you're not like putting the other people in the right um positions, pause like to to succeed. Like I think right now he's he's almost shooting like 50% on catch and shoots or something yeah, stupid like that. Crazy. Yeah. So why isn't he in more catch and shoot situations? Well, because they don't have they don't have anybody else to create, so he can't just catch and shoot. Like he should be the the beneficiary of like really good ball movement and and somebody else getting into the lane and creating it. But if he's the guy, then he never becomes the benefactor benefactor of it. Yeah. I well, I think. I'll oh, go ahead, little. No, I was gonna say I think I think you know to to some extent I think Brandon kind of suffered from that same thing. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, man. I, like I think Brandon's game, as skilled as he is, he doesn't necessarily like get himself. He doesn't get not necessarily. He don't give himself the the best shots. So if you had somebody who could orchestrate the the offense to get him better shots, one two dribble pull up, get him get him in his space, let him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. look, somebody asked a question in the chat. I wanted to go. I wanted to go back to all the questions and shit. They asked a question. Do you think? Brandon is gone, and do you, do you think Willie is gone? Dog, from what I know, from everything I see, 
I can't see Willie being gone, and I and I don't see them moving off Brandon. Like, just being honest, like I, I, I it, it don't look like that'll happen. So, if that's the case, if you keeping him with Zion, you need a guard to basically initiate for him and them because, yeah, you know, Zion, Zion could get his regardless. It don't really matter, like wh- whatever the, the space is. Like Br- Brandon needs it. Brandon, Brandon got a. It's got to be a good situation. Like it, it got to be a, a situation where he doesn't necessarily have to. I don't. I don't know why Brandon even. Like I don't know why he just don't start possessions at, at the elbow. Like because it works for them pretty much. Yeah, like that's where you go. That's where you go. That's where you gonna end up anyway. Like you taking seven, eight seconds off the shot clock to literally get, get to that spot. Yeah, yeah. just started there. I think. I think because the script is probably to kind of be physical with him and keep him yeah. from getting to his spot a bit. So, like, if you kind of look at how Grant is guarded, like off ball, they like he he like they try to wear him down, like for real, like for us. I'm sure he getting a lot of elbows to the ribs and shit like that. And that's why I thought initially coming into the season, I'm like, well, Brandon gonna be operating at the top of the key more. He gonna be distributing and playing downhill wrong like a motherfucker but now it's kind of if you regress all the way back to what you was doing last year when this team was healthy it's like how you plan on like because Lito, we like Lito and five we know we need a, a, a guard like we know we need a we need a, a, a big brain out there right like a guard high iq facilitate handle get to the cup but the thing is Ain't nobody really of like we probably can't name ten of them right now. Like you know what I'm saying, and that's why I think you gotta kind of go in another direction and hope that Zion and probably Herb and whoever you get can kind of fill out those voids by like I guess by committee. Nah, I, I don't think that can't happen. That can't happen no more. I think you. you no, just just by committee, like you can't do that no more. Mm. Like, if you're not telling her in your, like, his exit interview, like, hey, you need to be the guard mm-hmm. and have him work on guard-like things, like, coming into the into the next season, mm-hmm. then you've already, like, you failed. Mm-hmm. Like, you should know now, like, going into next season, this is going to be our point guard. This is going to be our guard. Because look, look at tonight. And then the third quarter, the Pills had problems getting the ball up the floor. Like, Man. CJ, CJ didn't want to dribble the ball against Drew. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it's hard. And then, and, okay, and then you yeah. switch and you're right there, Derek White. Oh, and also uh, Jason. J- I mean, Jalen Brown is engaged, so you got to mm. deal with him. And oh, he's guarding Zion physical. So, like, what do you necessarily do? Like, you got to have with a real handle. With a real handle, not not just one that can get by. No, like a real one. Like and that's the thing. It's like who is that at this stage? Like who who y'all think? If you had to. Bro, the only Excellent. person I can think that's really available, but I don't know how it work. I just I I I, I love to do a game. It's yeah, yeah. The John Trey Young, Trey Young, yeah, it, yeah. Like, it'd be that. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. It's funny. It's Dejounte, funny. Dejounte, yeah, yeah. Dejounte would be perfect. Like you know, what I'm saying I don't know what it would take, mm-hmm. but you know, I think that's an anomaly. Him shooting 44 shots, people are like I, I want that kind of dude on the team. Shit. Like he had to shoot for it. Like who, there was there was nobody else to shoot them. Yeah, he so, like even he said I didn't want to shoot that much. <laughs> Fuck, but I that's hey, I think. Oh, go ahead, Lou. No, 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 go ahead. I was I think even with like, if because to me, to me, get, you can get Sagoon and Trey Young in my opinion, because you still got because you got to move CJ ultimately. Like so, I, I think. If you you it's all, you almost could get like you almost could get a some journeyman to play the five almost because it depends on your closing unit like who you're gonna be closing with right but the guard position is just irreplaceable at this point like you desperately need like there was a play it might have been in the fourth we were trying to make an entry pass to Zion and the pass got intercepted and I'm like 
we everyone knew that pass was getting intercepted just because it was a struggle to kind of like make the pass it was awkward and it's like all season we, we've been going through this all season for years like yeah. you can't make a fucking entry pass guys hey bro <laughs> like, chris chris gray look at i mean defense isn't spelled like that but um we top six in defensive efficiency, and we having a problem with scoring. Like, like, what do you trade off? Like, how do you, how do you balance that? Like, how do you say, like, all right, well, we good at defense, but we're not stopping the really good teams, or like we stop them a little bit, but they score one hundred and three points, but we don't even score one hundred. So what is the actual trade off you gonna give up when you like you don't play defense yet? Um, you can't score. Like that that has to be a conversation. And the thing also with Trey Young, and I, I I like some things about his game, some things I don't like, but Trey Young is one of the best passes when he's talking about in the pick and roll and creating live opportunities for guys like this my, I think he one of the only reasons Clint Capella's still in the league. Like I mean, honestly, bro, the motherfucker average is like a le- thirteen assists. This, this yeah, year. like he, Trey Young, Trey Young, he doesn't. He another person that's in a weird situation. That's why I think the, the Pelicans need just a whole direction reshift. Because if you bring in a player like that and you kind of just have him say, "Look, this is what we're doing now," and I'm saying mm-hmm. this is how we operate in Zion. This is y'all. It's y'all too. Y'all, y'all one two. If you bring in Sagoon, y'all one, two, three. This, this, this is who he is, and we're gonna fill out the rest of the roster and do our thing. Then you at least have a real sense of direction. You at least have Zion would probably be the best player he ever played with, like ever, right? Um, so even if you just had Sagoon, Sagoon would probably be the best player he ever fucking played with at this stage. Cause I don't because who they had who they second best player was um was old boy man who got traded for nothing, who had the bad contract with the wristbands. Who? Slim that? dude. Um, where? The Hawks. The, yeah, he with the Jazz now. Is it oh, Collins? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's that? Yeah. John. Yeah, John, John Collins. Yo, John the Baptist. That that was like the dude. That was like the second best player on that team. You know what I'm saying? And you had heard of, and you had um, Dejounte just got. He came there after that, but like. You just need you need a modernized culture shift, bro. Because a team like the Rockets got too many avenues they can improve. The Spurs got too many avenues they can improve. OKC got too many avenues they can improve. And, and Chet ain't gonna, even who we Chet gonna be yet. Like what, so. What uh, the? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead so, go. so the to uh, like I said yesterday, uh, we were talking in the chat. I keep hearing Trey aligned with San Antonio. Mm. Like I, I keep hearing that's a thing. Um but I want I wanted to answer my dog's question. Like er, like I hear you know I'm I'm seeing the chat just makes eye on the point guard. I, I respectfully like no. You know what I'm saying? Like n- no mm. I, I he he can't be the full time point guard. He he can't bro. He can't yeah, he can't do that. I, I think your point guard also has to have the ability to shoot threes at, at this yeah or you neutralize too much in the pick and roll. Cause no one gonna be worried about him, like, and you kind of, yeah, your point guard gotta be able to shoot threes. I, I don't think it'll work. Like the point Zion thing is something you, that's like, the 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 right hook to knock a motherfucker out. Like that's not something you play for forty minutes or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, that's something you just you finish a team off with, like right. versus you know something you deploy full time. They they need they need a traditional point guard like for real with a crazy handle. Like, I, li- I like Kobe White. I like I like Kobe White. Kobe White would be nice. I wonder if he too he'd be too valuable to move now. But that motherfucker would be nice. Lamelo. Somebody say Lamelo. Lamelo just got so many weird things going on. Like I like Lamelo a lot. He got so much weird shit happening with him though. I, I give it a try. Like I'm gonna lie. I, I think about it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I I double down with Lamelo. But just I, I like Co- the, the idea of Kobe White a bit. My whole purpose about well, my my thought process about this is being very reactionary to yeah. it, right? Like you're not getting somebody that no one sees value in or right. low value in, and like I I know he can hoop. 
this would be perfect for us. And then it like mm-hmm. it happening. Like it's like return on investment. Like LaMelo is almost like too high to go after. And then if it don't work, like you've expounded time, money, and effort. Assets, and it doesn't work. Everything. Ass- yeah, yeah. Like, so I don't know if that's the you know what I'm saying? Like there has to be somebody else. I mean, I I still like Jaden Ivy. Like in, in in a real grand scheme of things, I mean, I don't think he gonna be like all NBA, mm-hmm. but somebody that can attack the rim, that shots coming along. If you if you watch him play enough, yeah, um, he's becoming smarter. It's just I think he got a raw deal just being in Detroit, playing playing along with you know Monty. And, and what's old boy who got um got cut? Oh Killian. yeah, uh, Killian Hayes. Yeah, yeah, you playing like you can't get they they not giving you minutes over Killian Hayes like they they sabotaging uh, Ivy over there. Yeah, and and then the, the the when he does get the minutes like he balls like he balls yeah. out, and then people are, like grading him like okay the Pelicans just played him like he had a bad game I'm like ain't no K no Duran it's just him. And what what do you expect to see? I feel about getting eight. Hey. And on nah. another note, nah, I don't. Ever since, uh, what's her name, Lexi Brown? Ever since Lexi Brown said he was soft, who like, that eight? Yeah, Lexi Brown was oh. talking to. She was talking to. I was to think she was on all the smoke, and she was like, "How he so tall, but he just so like sad." Yeah, I think he was better in 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 Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh yeah, it's yeah. the it's the reason though. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's yeah, it's, it's a reason. Yeah, like Chris, Chris get people paid, bro. Like we, yeah, we, that's really what it boils down to. Colin assessing the D-Lo. That motherfucker oh, getting missed in goddamn things. God damn, yeah. that, Yo, that playoff crazy. series was crazy. Oh, he was like David Robinson, dog. Like yeah. he, he was he looking was like David Robinson. That that, that motherfucker. Was good. God, I was like, y'all not gonna do nothing different? What the fuck? Shit, that was crazy. No, what's crazy is the what's crazy is like we played you played drop against Chris Paul, like <laughs> in a playoff series, and, and it's like, bro, do you do you not know who Chris Paul? Say, dog, look, re- regardless, it don't matter who the big was, it mm-hmm. don't matter yeah, who the big was, was in drop. He was it was gonna get got. The only big that made a difference in that situation was fucking Giannis. Giannis is the only guy. Yeah. Ooh, he he could stop it. He could break it up. And when I say break it up, like Giannis literally guarded it, switched, and they threw the alley to Aiden, and he ended up blocking that shit. Son, that's that that dog. That's that block was incredible, dog. Fuck. That's why I'm like, and it's, that's the thing with the pals. Like you, that's why I almost you gotta it gotta be a, a motherfucker like Trey Young also because the person has to be able to facilitate as well as score. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like it can't be like a, even as great as Rondo was, it can't be Rondo. Like it can't no. be it can't be Alfred Payton, because at that point you either asking Brandon to shoot a lot more threes, which it ain't it ain't happening. Like it, it fuck it, it's over, it's over for that. Or Zion gonna have to start taking more threes because somebody like someone on the perimeter has to shoot more threes if your point guard isn't doing it. It, Cause it, it neutralizes the entire pick and roll. Like if you watch the Luca and um, Kyrie two man action, it, it got to be one of the most dangerous fucking things in basketball right now. I heard Fox Chat. be on the move. Fox. We just talked about this. Yeah, we we just we just talked about Fox. You know what? If I'm the Kings, if I'm the Kings, I probably move Fox J- just because. You gotta, and, and it's not, it ain't no problem. Like, it's not nothing wrong with Fox, but it's like no. the relationship is like, like, if you out, you saw, you, y'all saw Fox post game. Yeah, like, I don't care about me. I'm only here because you, because yeah. they asked yeah. me. Yeah. Here Fox, a man who, like, he had the end of his wits with, <laughs> with this shit. Like he going out there, he shoot thirty something times, and, and it's just like he need he need to play with somebody who better than him. Like he need to, he need to calm down a little bit. That's the thing. And the way you the Kings, I wouldn't move Sabonis. So Fox is where you get most of the return from. Kevin, Kevin, this, this, yeah, that was a they mistake. Moved. That was a Bro, mistake. I thought it was a mistake when they drafted Halliburton. 
Yeah, just, for the fact, you know. Because everybody had three guards, right? It was him. Man, they had Fox. And I was like, if you're going to draft Halliburton that high, like you couldn't play Fox and Halliburton at the same time. But then you end up giving Fox a max. So mm. there was no way you were going to trade Fox at that time. Yeah, you couldn't so, do it. So you go and get some bonus, but I'm like, fuck. That, that was that just didn't make any sense. It didn't. Like they were never going to be able to play in the same backcourt. It, it, it just couldn't. So uh, Fox kind of miscast as a number one option. And that's really the, the only issue with him. It's like no one else on the perimeter can really create like that. Yeah. He can, he's still a catch and shoot guy at this stage, and you're not moving him unless it's for like a great deal. You're not moving Keegan Barnes is still Barnes, and you got Malik Monk. Malik Monk is six man though, so Fox is a, he's best suited as probably a number two, number two option, yeah. you know. At I this stage, be, I, I wouldn't be mad if the Pels took a fly on Malik Monk though, yeah. He, just, he, his- he turned us down before though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Yeah, like, I, he got to play, play with his college teammate. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it was, y'all was thought Malik. I think it no. depends on like how. For me, it depends on how how to how to something like. Do you you keeping CJ? If you keeping CJ, I don't know how that would work. So if you take a fly on Malik, Malik, who who on the team? So is 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 Bi still here? They go pay BI regardless, so, so I'm gonna say that mean you moving CJ, yeah. So I don't think they can afford Malik because Malik, if he especially if he get that six man, he'll get paid. He, bro, I'm, I'm about to say they probably move Dyson though. Every time I see Jalen Williams play basketball, I, Make I you think, mad. It, bro, <laughs> I'll be mad. They, I mean, I don't care, Fuck it. They got a dude in the G League that is way better than Dyson. His name is Dejan Giroux. He from the He Lawrence. nice. He nice. Okay. I've been fo- I've been following the dude Deke. for a minute. Yeah, Deke. Yeah. I've been following dude for probably probably a good five six years at this point. Probably even longer than that. I think he dim DM me one day on like on, on Instagram, but like this this dude got 37, 16, and nine oh in the God. G League game. In the G League game. Oh, he he can he gonna guard one through three. Oh, okay. Like I wouldn't necessarily like put him as like a guard. Like I think he's like one of those people, like a tweener, right? Like, yeah. If Dyson would never score thirty-seven points in a G League game, never, never. Yeah. No, he would like. So like my 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 thought process is like, there's no if you if you have an opportunity to move off Dyson, you you got to. You gotta do it ASAP. You gotta do it ASAP. Like there's Man. the worst there's, thing they could do is play Dyson in the playoffs on a national that's why stage. I, that's why I said they, they shouldn't have brought him back. Yeah, they should have left him in the G League. Yeah, because it looked good when he had 22 points in, in whatever 10 rebounds, whatever mm-hmm. he had. It looked yeah. good because it's in the G League and he coming out like he has an excuse because he's coming off a like a, a tear and he's young, so you just keep him down there. That way you build value. Mm-hmm. There was a too much of a risk to bring them back now, mm. and then diminish the value. Yeah, like because it but, like we don't think we don't think like that. As, you you brought him back and you immediately gave him twenty five minutes, like against the know. like one two of the best wings, two All NBA wings. <laughs> what the fuck? And look, and Derek it's White, crazy. who probably about to be All NBA this year. See, to me, the thing with Trey and CJ is because we we all talked about this in the members only show. It's like I don't think CJ got no market like that, and that that's the and that's the thing where it's like you probably got to attach something to CJ to move him to get positive value back. And at that point, you the Pelicans still need a lead guard, a big, and a bench, a second unit because Najee's gone, JV gone. Uh, there's everybody gone at that state at that point. You got about nine people on the roster, nine to ten people on the roster. I think it's nine. So you just gotta fill so many slots with that return from CJ 
that I just don't think the valuable uh, the value is is out there like that for him. me because I'm trying to think of some teams. I know Chris Chris mentioned Philly, and I'm like, was, who Philly no, got yeah. though? Like Paul Reed, maybe you could read. Uh, Niang, Niang, I guess. Yeah, like Niang and Cleveland. Oh, yeah, I take I take Kelly Oubre. Yeah, I take Oubre. Maybe, uh, yeah, like but, just just for a three and D guy. To um probably get some picks. I'll ask him for some picks because I think Joel leaving soon. Okay. Joel available. 26 and 27. Yeah, I asked him like 26, 27. Yeah, yeah I was saying Joel available. That, that, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that changes things. Yeah, then I don't think I'll move him though. I, I to me, the best thing I, I I seen listening to like the Nets podcast and the Rockets podcast, you gotta call for Sagoon though, and just be like, look. Like what was that? In? Like what, what what y'all what y'all looking for realistically? And let let's do business because you still got CJ in the tuck. Like you can you can move, yeah. and all he could be like, look, you won't stick around. This, this is what we about to do. We'll try to move you by the deadline when somebody else gets disgruntled. Because if you could walk away in this off season with with your not even your fucking not even a starting center, a franchise center, in Sagoon, that to me that changes a lot for the future of the team. Hey, no, you, go ahead, go ahead, you know. No, I was gonna say if I'm, if I'm, I mean, Philly got some interesting players on their team. Like I, I've always been a fan of De'Anthony Melton. Like, I think he's a solid glue yeah. guy. Yeah, he's and solid. He don't make, he don't make no money, right? He make eight million dollars. I'm did he get at, hurt recently? I think so. I, if he, I was about to say if he did, I don't know. But K, KJ Martin would be, he'd be an interesting prospect for me, just simply because of his athleticism. Like I don't expect him to be. A guy who's gonna come in, like we, you talking about just running the floor, right? Because the Pels play with space, you know what I'm saying? Like play, mm-hmm. play with pace. And then I forgot Buddy Hill over there. Oh yeah, Buddy, and he about to be free agent. He going to Dallas? Because no, yeah, so is Dallas, Dallas. and that's another thing, bro. Like that's the thing. The other teams is they got so many pathways to get better because once Dallas move off of Tim Hardaway. Oh, and you still got PJ contract you could trade. Like, and PJ having a bad year by his standards. Well, we appreciate you. Wait, neglecting my little yet. <laughs> we appreciate you. That's real shit right there. Yeah, man, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy, like, man, buddy go to Dallas, bro. That that would be that would be unfair, though. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. He got a, yep. You're right, David. David, he got a house in Dallas. He's been out there. Under, oh, he uh, do? Yeah, yeah, he got a. He been having a house in Dallas. My uh, my partner Merrick's is his uh photographer. Oh, and he okay. Like, he's been he's been trying to get to Dallas before he even got to Philly. That was the, the he was that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I mean, he went to Oklahoma. That's yeah. And shit, know what that mean? He taking he'll yeah. take a pay cut to go. Hey, Chaz, we ever told you the story about how we was trying to get the summer league dog <laughs> in a plane? No, me and five and Justin dog. Oh, <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> oh, it's Kinda, just so funny because we used to talk about OKC in Dallas, but we, we no. had to fly to Dallas for a layover. But oh, Lord. we we couldn't land because of like the weather or some shit like that. You had the circle, yeah. No, they had the circle in the air for well, like hour. thirty minutes, thirty minutes an hour. They well, sent the ass, sent our ass to Oklahoma City because we needed fuel because we had been circling for so long, and then got the OKC gassed up. And then we got the land in Dallas. Crazy shit I've ever seen. Boy, that's a hell of a detour. Fuck, man. Boy, that shit was crazy, dog. We they was that, like, we... man. Go ahead. Oh, I was about to say, we got to Vegas at what, like 2? Like p.m.? 2 in the morning, dog. No, a.m. Oh, low. We supposed to land at like 9 p.m. Damn. Good thing Vegas never sleep, but fuck, still. Because you can't really even check. Can you check in that late? No. Yeah, well, you can't check in until like we noon. Did, but we didn't. <laughs> So it was crazy, dog. We were standing in line to check in, like it was a hell of people. The the, the pilot got on the thing talking about, yeah, uh, we're circling the sky, but we're low on fuel right now. So, oh, like, like, like boy, what? keep that to yourself. No, like, why would you tell me that? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Man, you tripping? Yeah, no, I I, I don't know. I'm but nah, they also got they also got. I mean, he's he's a little older now, but like they got Rocco and they got Batum. Robin Lopez in Philly? No, no, no. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Covington. 
Oh, oh, I saw that boy on the bench the other day. Yeah, I saw it when um you said when that, it, like you saw that boy at the corner store. Oh something. yeah, I guess that's that's not a crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw him when um out of it, man. This motherfucker at Roku after what happened. After that that file on Kelly Uber they didn't call, he dapping up the clippers like, yeah. I'm like, bitch, you on our team now. The fuck is you doing? Man? We we needed this game. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and Maxi about to get that's another reason why they might not fuck with CJ though, because Maxi about to get paid. He yeah. getting big bread. But if they do fuck with CJ, it's like, <laughs> nah, he just nah, make nah. too much money, dog. He make yeah. a lot of money. He make more fuck. Say Cole, he nah. make more than BI. I'm not right I'm now. Not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to come up to Tobias. Yeah. Corey, check out an interview, a, a video I did. It was like I think it might have been this off this past offseason. I was breaking down like Siakam versus Brandon contract versus like Tobias Harris contract and shit like that. And I'm like, though, you could find yourself in a bad spot with a contract real fucking fast, though. Like, and that's the Sixers. They've been trying to move Tobias for years. Listen, they signed that boy and immediately regretted. Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. that money that they gave him. So they and, thought he did, they thought they was getting Jimmy with him, like him yeah. and, him and Jimmy is a package deal. They're like, nah, Jimmy out of here. They got a Man, lot of no, just, go ahead. No, 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 I about to say I thought Jimmy was like y'all chose to bias over me. They chose That's to pay. Yeah, they chose to pay to bias over. I think Jimmy wanted more money, and they was like, like y'all gonna split. We gonna split the baby with y'all two. And give you a little bit, give him and Jimmy like nah, fuck all that. I'm, I'm the it. one. <laughs> and, and they and they end up keeping to buy. yo. But y'all remember I texted y'all the other day. I, I was telling y'all like how the rocket situation remind me of the Rubio and Kevin Love situation because they this one contracts was a little different. They gave Rubio like a I think they wasn't gonna give Kevin Love a five year designation. Because at, at a certain point, you only get one of them, I think, back at, mm-hmm. back at that time. And they was like, we saving that for Rubio. So they was like, we're going with Rubio over Kevin, over Kevin Love. And this you was can. Kevin Love getting like 20 rebounds a game. <laughs> so they got Kevin the fuck up out of here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, it was the Cavs or it was uh, – No, this Minnesota. was Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, they was like, we're going with Rubio. Come here, Rubio saw- used to be nice. No, he no no. I always fuck with Rubric. Matter of fact, you seen that shit with the uh with Minnesota? What? When? With the, the owners? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I did see that with Aaron Rodriguez. Yeah. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah. See, bro, let me ask you this. They got a lot of. I'm looking just looking at pending free agents, and mm-hmm. you know the Paul George shit, right? Like yeah. his situation. Well, I don't. I don't. The Clippers in a weird space because I don't know how they don't think Paul would want the max, or is deserving of the max. Um, Paul Reed? No, Paul no, George. Paul George. Oh, what the fuck? Um, so you got him, but crazy. I'm looking at what? Why James, is James Wiseman like? What? What the fuck is up with James Wiseman? He he had got he didn't have really he he should have never got drafted to the Warriors. Yeah, because. The, and they they played themselves, and it kind of blamed it on him for his lack. Of, the Warriors don't develop big men like that. Like you know what I'm saying? They only like think of every big man the Warriors had, with the exception of Looney. And yeah. Looney wasn't even supposed to be what he ended up being. Looney's supposed to be like a real fucking wing, like real. Kevin KD. Looney it's supposed to be KD. KD. Light. KD. Yeah, he's supposed to be the next KD. Like and he would just they had Bell. Um, yeah. a couple of them Jordan, other dudes, them dudes out the league. Yep, the Jordan, Jordan. Them dudes out the league now. Nah, like, so I think if he would have got drafted to a team that it gave him a lot of minutes off the rip, he might be a little better. That's why he looked kind of straight in Detroit right now. I think his contract like 17 million or something, huh? Seven million. Uh, Wait, his, his rookie thing. Yo, David David Lee came from the Knicks Nine. and went to the Knicks. He came. David Lee came from the Knicks and went to the Spurs. Yeah. He went to the he went to the Golden State then the Spurs I believe. So like not like I don't think Golden State develops big men. They don't put they not they have it for what mm-hmm. they got they got Draymond they just needed somebody that's competent. I think they do a good job of like teaching basketball, but yeah. like a, being a big man is like a like a different skill set. Like they don't they don't play that brand of basketball. You can't to be honest you can't play that brand of basketball with. 
who they got on the perimeter. No, nah, you can't do that. Like you taking shots away from at the time, Clay Thompson and um Steph. That's insane. That. <laughs> like that's insane. Clay been yeah. really good as a late. Yeah, he he bouncing back. I'm happy because them injuries fucked over him. Yeah. Like yeah. So, so is Lito is Paul George here unrestricted free agent this offseason? He is let's see. I don't know if he unrestricted. Cause if he restrict, nah, yeah, he, he no, nah, he unrestricted. He unrestricted in twenty twenty five. He so, just got a no. It ain't even an option. He ain't even a play option. So I, I think Cleveland. I'm, I say Cleveland. I think I think the Clippers look at Paul as a, as, a, as a third option. Honestly, I think the more I think the more data they get on Paul, I think they like because Kawhi Kawhi is still kind of like Kawhi. Mm-hmm. And James Harden been a revelation for them. So I think they might be looking at him like, well, fuck. I mean, do we need two third options? Now, that's a team that should make a call for Cat, to be honest. Yeah. Woo, that would be, that would be dangerous. I think, I think about this. It's like Paul is so, like, versatile mm-hmm. that it almost is a hindrance to him. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. deserve it. Yeah. yeah, like it doesn't. It doesn't deserve it. I, I, like that type. Like Paul George is that type of player you want uh, alongside Zion. Mm-hmm. Like it, it makes the perfect sense. He could. He could self create. He can catch yeah. and shoot. He can. He can defend when when it's time. And he's not the defender that he was. The only thing yeah. that messes him up. He's thirty three right now. And he like, gonna want release. He gonna want. Four years, cause he gonna want this last big payday. God damn! Yeah. Um, I ain't lie to you. If, if he available, I I do it and just say fuck it. Like let let's just see what happens. Cause you still got CJ, you can move, and, and that's the thing. You still got options, and I don't see. I don't. Know. He can't be your only move. That's that's the thing. He just can't be your only move. Yeah. Yo, you was talking about CJ. Uh, you was asking about CJ destinations, and like uh-huh. for me, it's always it's always gonna be LA because you know LA go some kind of way. LA go retool, yeah. Know, sneak, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a trade. Talent. Yeah, like they're gonna yeah. have talent. It's gonna be Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, it could be depending on if he cool with like a six man role. It could be New York. I see him going to Boston too. It, to it, McCullum. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking about with them teams, which what would you want from them? Like, like let's say yeah. with Miami. Could be Miami, yeah. I said give me Tyler Hero. <laughs> like, me, I'm gonna start my bid up high. Give me Tyler Hero. If they say yeah, then fuck it. Okay, I, I think Tyler Hero is nice when he got hurt. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I think Tyler Hero for, for Dane. Yeah, so yeah, it sounds crazy. You know, it sounds crazy, but like, all right. It's almost like okay, well, why would I even? I'm not gonna entertain that. Y'all say, the- you, you know what's crazy? It, I think the Pels like one or two games away from. I think they one or two games away from matching or getting the Bucks pick swap that they yeah did for or Drew. at least they were. They were. I don't know if they still are, but I think they may, maybe the Bucks won tonight and the Pelicans lost. At least I think the Bucks won because the Bucks was playing. And it was up like. So they, I think they needed one more game to do it right. But if they won, then I, I guess it don't really. My my thing with this draft though is that everything I've read is that it's such this a weak a, draft. It's, it's, a, it's not a great draft. Like, so it's almost like that's why. To, to be honest, I wouldn't want them to. I wouldn't want them to draft. Yeah, they should have did that shit two years ago. But I wouldn't want them to draft anyway. Like what, yeah, because we, we need to see, go ahead. No, I'm just saying. Like, do we need? Like, we can't develop. We can't develop the players we have. What are we trying to? And that's why it's fucked up. Because if they stand pat, if they stand pat, but whether it be with the Lakers pick to answer your question, or with the Bucks pick, it's like if you stand pat, you need cheap labor, yeah. so to speak, right? 
But the fucked up thing is, well, them picks gonna be way out of the lottery. But for the well, we, at least we think so with the Lakers pick. If you stay in pack, you need cheap labor, so you're almost forcing yourself to have to draft somebody, or maybe you kick if maybe you kick the can and get two seconds or something like that for one of these picks. But they no, they in a bad spot, and I, it's feel like we the only people that realize how bad of a spot they in this off season financially because. Again, if you don't go to West Coast Finals, this is not a team you pay the tax for. And, yeah. like, I don't know, you know, the reason why the Celt- that's not the, Celt- the Clippers can get away, the Celtics, too, can get away with, like, giving Paul George a bunch of money and re-upping with Kawhi, re-upping, 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 even though they ain't got no ring, it's because they're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. They, they winning big still, like, you know what I'm saying? But the Pelicans, we just can't say that. So it's like, you're gonna be you gonna be in a fucked up position. You you you, you don't make no moves this offseason. Like it's gonna be bad. What, think, what about oh I'm sorry, Father. Go ahead. No, 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 it's cool. No, I I'm just saying, like to Chaz's point, it's like twofold in a sense. The Celtics are moving like towards winning a ring. Right. Well, the Clippers, they moving towards a new arena. They right. gotta sell tickets. Right. They gotta have these big names. TV deals, deal, endorsements. Like, like this, they Invested a lot of money into this. It's a drop in a bucket for him to give Paul what another fifty million for yeah. three years, three four years. Like it, it's not gonna hurt him because he knows that's gonna pay dividends, right? Because he's trying to sell tickets and do wipe his ass fifty million dollars. Like that's how. Yeah. And then for him, you're only thinking like, I Paul, I give you two years, hundred million dollars. Like you know, it's ways you could you could tweak it and finagle it to be like I give you all the money you want, but for on a short contract, so I got a, I got yeah. some flexibility in the future, you know. What's our thing, Emmanuel? Quickly, a free agent. Um, like this off season. Oh yeah, like, uh, he, he PG, but he need he he gonna want to get paid. Like this yeah. ain't no. I think he gonna like. Right, right, I think hey, man, uh, what's his name? Him and um. Uh, Gary Martin, Trent, for agent. Martin Morris, yeah. See, that's the thing. I kind of feel like you need an A1 guard now. Like the Pelicans, yeah. we just never had, except for Chris Paul, we ain't never had an A1 guard. Like, I, I feel like you could, at certain at a certain point, all these assets, they just ain't about to mean nothing no more. Like, that's, that's the crazy thing. Like, I ain't really hung up on the Sagoon thing too much, but I ain't realized dude was 21. Yeah, and I'm thinking, good, like, bro. this motherfucker 21, this is his second year, and I'm comparing him to motherfuckers like going into year 10, year 9, year 8, year 13. It's like, oh, hey, hold up. Yeah. Oh, J- J- JV getting the best of him. Like, he's supposed to at times. Like, but then you see the him. First game, first two games, dog, it's Sagoon. Sagoon was dealing with JV, dog. Yeah. Like, you yeah. dealing with him, and it's like, and the thing with Sagoon, he could he could play the four too. So you could even if you wanted to go get like a a traditional rim blocking big, you could still play them next to each other because Sagoon can shoot the midi. Like, hey, hey, that boy in the mid post, he, he nice. Get that fucking the one leg, one leg thing, yeah. The, I'm yeah, like, he do that. He don't even have to do that. He don't even have to when he do it. That's you, know, crazy. You, saw, you don't see that boy do that. Yeah. So that, that one leg, yeah. Dirt, come on, you yeah, he cold. Yeah, he cold. Yeah, I, I, man, yo, yeah, court, look, if Sagoon get a corner, I agree. Sagoon I get just, all the money. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> just about to, I was just about to say that, dog. Yep. No, yeah, nah, he start, he start hitting them pick and pop threes like Joker oh, in them corner God. threes. It's, it's, it's rap city. No, and the, and the thing is, it's like, hold on, who not good? Hold on, hold on, well, hi, hold on, hold on. Oh, he's saying Bronny. Oh, 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 my bad. He's saying Bronny not good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. I what's going to end up happening with Bronny, man. I hope the Pelicans draft think, Bronny. I think, I think <laughs> just, Bronny, to, just yeah, to see yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah, I think I, 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 all in general, I think, man, they need to – I think the one that does, they need to just eliminate that shit, bro. Like, the dudes who want to play, let them go to college. If you want to go to the NBA, let them go to the NBA. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's ruining the college game. So, like, it, 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 like dudes don't have no – IQ, they don't have no skill for real. Like the game been bad. I think Bronny should. They I should think stay. Bronny should stay. Yeah, uh, he declared already. I don't think so. I think I think he should stay. 
Because I, 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 I think I don't think Brandon, I think Brandon could play. Yeah, 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 like I don't think he's not good. I just mm-hmm. don't think he's good enough. He ain't yeah. LeBron. He let his last name is what fuck him up. So if, if 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 his name was like Jack Smith, we probably wouldn't we probably wouldn't talk be talking about him. Like yeah. and and that's the thing. And so that's when he comes into the league. He gonna have a lot of challenges. He gonna have a lot of up. Like he gonna be reviewed a lot different than a lot of players. Like Skip ain't gonna cut up, give him no love. Like it's gonna be bad for young bro. I I hope he just stay in the league. Like stay in college a little longer, just you know to work on a couple of things. Yeah, he yeah, he did have a uh, he had a cardiac arrest. Yeah, man. Like that's that's why I, when people were like, oh man, he playing like shit. I'm like dog, this nigga almost died, almost died. playing <laughs> basketball. Like what are we what are we talking about here? Like let, give yeah. him give him the off season, let him get back mm-hmm. get him back on his feet, and if he doesn't right. improve, then we can make our um you know yeah. our he might even decide to go to a different program, like somewhere that better suits him and helps him develop more. Yeah, you know and that nobody, team. Was ain't bad. Nobody. You're talking about the SC? Yeah, they was ass. Yeah, yeah like, I ain't heard like, about them being good for a long time though. That's and that's a lot of the problem with like especially like college basketball. I don't know if there's a lot of like really good coaches. You know, you you got big programs. Like who's actually like developing people? Jay Wright, probably Kentucky. Jay Wright, not that he retired. I mean, oh, he did. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like all of like the real vintage coaches. Like you got Nate Oates in, at Alabama. You got um, what's your boy at UConn? I forgot his name. Kentucky Fuck. out the tournament. Yeah, yeah like Cal. Cal not a really good. He I don't think he's like a, pain. Yeah. yeah, he just developed guards well. I like. I like like them. Like they got the dude. What's what's the um the I, white dude? Combo guard. Who talking about? Oh, we talking about oh Reed Reed Shepard. Yeah, Rob. people keep on sending me shit about him. I'm like, I don't. I don't, I don't, see I don't it. like undersized combo. He just look like it ain't gonna transfer. Like well, her, yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 Jay retire is is for me it's probably is or self. I like is I fuck with Izzo tough. I, like he got a long history of like developing people like to to play basketball. What's dog name? Who? What's 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 homie name in Houston? Coach, oh, uh, Kevin Sampson. I like Kev. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Um, Tony, Tony Bennett. Nah, we got to All right, we're gonna talk about Virginia oh, a little bit. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about Virginia for a second. Them motherfuckers couldn't score if you paid them to. Like, let's not like you talk about defense. Trey Murphy went over there to learn defense. Did learn the lick of shit. Like we, like he didn't learn nothing. Like let's I'm gonna talk about you, you Virginia folks. I'm gonna talk about my partner here. Like the, the defensive thing, like it don't matter if you're not developing offensively. Like we didn't even know Trey Murphy could do all of these things because he yeah. was at Virginia learning how to play defense. <laughs> Yo, somebody said we cooled off on law. It's like nah, Laurie just he, he ain't an option no more. He just he ended the season too strong. Like like Laurie was getting all like if they wasn't trying to tank, he would have been all NBA this year, though. Like he ended the season too strong. You probably could still get a Colin Sexton, but again, Colin Sexton is a score for first point guard. So uh, Laurie ain't going nowhere though. Laurie imagine, was nice, though. imagine using these names as your as your, your points. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, come on. Boy. Come on, Candy <laughs> Four. Hey, but you know I ain't what? Lie. Yo, Sam Hauser was tripping today. Sam yeah. Hauser got in the game. I said, like, "What's wrong with this man?" Yeah, <laughs> he was supposed to be pulling. He's supposed yeah. to be pulling. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. Joe Harris. I think. I think that our type of player is is done. The Joe Harris is the um. Yeah. Not JJ. JJ was what, so much better what, than Joe Harris. What's your man name in uh, Miami? Yep. Yep. yep yeah, yep, I think yep. that our type is done. Them dudes yeah. that got paid and turned. The, like the just the catch and shoot guy, non athletic yeah. catch and shoot guy. I think that's dead just because, like, if you ain't like 6'10, like, like Yang or something, it, then it's too easy to neutralize you. And then Joe Harris had that surgery. The little bit of athleticism he had, oh, that shit zapped. 
Say five. My brother in love went to Virginia. So I be having these same conversations. He be he be Virginia wrapped out and I'd be like, Y'all don't have anything. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they they come in to be role guys. Like like I I'm talking about like the real deal guy. Like yeah, cool. Like you look at Villanova, right? They gonna put guys in the league. Yeah, they might be rotational players, but they like key rotational players. It's like whatever. But I do agree with you, Chaz. I think there's like some misconception about like how the the archetype of of a just a shooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can shoot and play in the NBA, but eventually, like especially with, like the ability to switch everything. Yeah, I don't think that that's gonna be like you. You can't get open like you used to. You can't. You're not gonna free. You're not gonna find the mismatches of like okay, you on somebody seven two. Look at Wimby. I know that's like kind of like far out, it's yeah. An outlier as an example, but you get switched on and Wimby there. Like, how are you gonna get your shot off if you're not athletic to get by him? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna you go oh, pass it? Then there's another mismatch that that the defense has on yeah. you. So I, I don't I don't know. And that dude, that dude already so cold, bro. That's that's a shame. Even if you're athletic to get by him, it don't matter. He never out to play, dog. <laughs> like he just never out to play. The thing with trading for Eric Blesso, to my to my understanding, they wanted um George Hill. George Hill didn't want to play for the Pelicans, though. Yeah, George Hill said no. Yeah, so G- they took Eric Blesso just to make the salaries work, but they, they didn't want Eric Blesso. But at the time, Eric Blesso was coming off of a couple good regular seasons. The, the thing on him was he was bad in the playoffs, but he was a 20-point guy in the regular season. He just got here and just turned this say fuck it, like gave up his whole career. He a guy, he lost his athleticism. He lost his yeah. thing that made him special. That motherfucker yeah. used to be a dog. And with the Clippers, like in oh. the and Phoenix, that motherfucker was an athletic beast. Do you, do you know his nickname, like coming out of high school and shit? What was it? Baby, Baby Brown. Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, Brown. yeah, yeah. Baby Brown. That motherfucker no. was an athletic beast. Like, dog, Super even sh- Aaron Gordon was – had like some crazy athletic Eric, Eric Gordon, my bad. Eric Gordon was cold. Eric Gordon was cold. Like, at Indiana, oh my god. Eric Gordon was, was nice, though. Like, even with the Clippers, like Eric Gordon was he was all right. But motherfuckers, them weird injuries start piling up, and they just made him a catch and shoot guy. Like the Pelicans started it, and Houston just put the nail in the coffin with that. When they were shooting all them threes and one of them games, they was like, Fuck it, you don't got nothing but shoot. And he won yeah. six man a year, didn't he? I Did believe he? so. I, I believe so. Finalist or something for six man of the year. Y'all want y'all want to talk LSU basketball before we get the fuck out of here? We uh, can. I'm I'm just happy for the girl. I don't I ain't watch, I don't really watch, follow LSU, but yeah. shout out to them, man. Man, uh, I think they should take the ball out of Haley Van Lee. This is, this is the girl that transferred from Louisville. Oh, Take that it. was her name. Yeah, okay. I don't know what. Hey, Haley Van Lith. I mean, she she's solid. Don't don't get it twisted. Like she knows she good. good. She good. I but think they need to with play. them. No, with them. It, it, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you didn't know you didn't know Flo J was gonna take a, a leap, and then you had Michaela uh, as a freshman, so you can't really just say give the ball to her because she's really not that type of player. So you needed somebody to dribble the ball, especially in the girls' game. Um, it's just you see Flo J's like ascension because mm-hmm. she, she's pretty much the only girl from last year's team to really improve from last year to this year. Like her skill set has improved, her shot, her, her ability to get to the rim, uh, her defense. I think she gonna she probably gonna be like the better WNBA player out of all of them. What year is she in? She's a sophomore, she's a sophomore, yeah. Oh, I about that, I, I, bro. I, bro, I think she was so bad last year. Like, I didn't think she was good at all. I, no, so, that's what I'm saying. Funny. Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought it was like, ah, she here because her name, a little bit of that. Like, she could play a little bit, but I didn't think like she was anything special. This version of her? Oh no, 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 no. You can see the potential. She like six foot. She can shoot it a little bit better now, and she athletic. She gonna guard one through probably four a little bit. Nah, she can hoop. Let me let me ask y'all this because I, I had I had quite a few problems with some of the things Leslie Brown was saying on the show with Gilbert Arenas. Man, but, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. She it, it was it was it was it was blatant. But 
if you look at the young the, the sisters at LSU, if you them and you getting this NIL money and these endorsements and stuff, why would you even make the leap to WNBA? If if no matter of fact, my bad, I misspoke. Why would you take a step backwards to go to the WNBA when you're a superstar in the realm you're in? Like, well, I was play time. I'm fucking. I get my doctorate. <laughs> I'll be I'll be LSU for years. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't go to the WNBA, if, especially if I was like I wouldn't do it. I mean, yeah. I get it. You want to play against the best of the best. That's cool. Fine. Splendid. But the money that you make now, you may not ever see that in the WNBA. It's possible, but you may not. Bro. So, I don't know. It just makes more sense to stay. Uh, the the no, WNBA is losing over $10 million every year. Like, they're, they're in the red. So, I'm like, you not – like, think about some of the people who do who have made the leap. Like, Tia Cooper, I was a fan of her. Liz, Cam Liz Cambridge is in China right now. Yeah, yeah, she like, she quit. Stopped. She quit though. Huh? She, she quit. Said she yeah. stopped playing. She stopped playing yeah. basketball because she made money modeling yeah. and doing OnlyFans and shit like that. Like it's like a waste of. And she was on the Sparks, so so it's like, and you in LA, you can't, you probably can't afford to live in LA on the WNBA sat like like Saturday like that. So man, I stay my ass in, in Tigerland. And hey, going, to the, going to the WNBA millionaire already. So. Yeah. So this this question, even even this one, right? Like, but I don't have the same brand deals. All right, you talking about Lexi, Lexi Brown, and she made a statement about a might it might have been the Shields. Uh mm -hmm. the she plays for the I think the Chicago Sky, if I'm not mistaken. Um remember when who hey who got like a a, a deal? Oh, Caitlin Clark. Uh shout yeah. out the big three, shout out the uh mm -hmm. oh my god. Ice five cube. million dollars, he, man. He offered Caitlin Clark five million dollars, right, to play in the big three. Like he said, he was trying to do it on a low. It kind of got out. Cool. It is what it is. She, they got upset because he didn't offer like any of the WNBA players or like any of the black girls mm -hmm. that contract, right? Cool. All right, you gonna say that? Like, all right. This week, uh, one of Duke's players got a. Got an NIL deal. The dude to, with the nails. Oh my God. His, <laughs> Go ahead. His nails. To paint his yeah. nails, right? No woman came yeah. out to say, Why you ain't give that deal yeah. to a woman when yeah. we paint our nails all the time? That that right there lets me know, like, it's not about like the money. Right. It's because you want to be. Like almost uh, in the forefront of everything, only when it benefits you. Now, right. the nail thing could benefit you, but apparently that wasn't big enough for you. It, you know, here's the crazy thing with with the sister Lexi. It's like, all right, she said on one hand that I have no desire to play three on three basketball, right? But then she said, well, big if Ice Cube want to build a big three women's league, I'm all for it. I ain't passing up no opportunity. Which one is it? And not only that, yo, like, because someone asked, like, why wouldn't they have, yeah, he said, why would they have the same brand deals? They may, but I think th there's a really, there's a really weird, weird misconception about the WNBA's fan base. The majority of the WNBA's fan base is actually men. Yeah. yeah. W women generally don't support the WNBA. What helps and allows some of these girls to get bigger platforms where they are is the fact that they, you got, they playing on a college campus. There's a built-in fan base. You got, yeah. your, you know, uh, your alumni. You got, like Shaq went to LSU. You got, you know, different things. So with Ice Cube offering Caitlin Clark that contract, he's not just offering her. You was coming with it. Is I'm on ESPN now. I'm on Pat McAfee show. I'm um I got well, who she played for Ohio or uh, who she played Iowa. for Iowa. I got Iowa's coming with her. Like you know what I'm saying? That's like that's like signing the rock, <laughs> right? It's like signing the rock of female basketball. And you got um what's a weird wrestler? Uh, you got the Brooklyn Brawler telling you that's fucked up. You why not? <laughs> and it's like yo, you not the rock. <laughs> what you want? Like what you what you want? I I just think I think that's a that's a real issue just 
not not to say like women are like not i think women should support women a little bit yeah better. absolutely yeah like like black people should support black people a little bit better white people you already do that um i just think there there's a time and place for it <laughs> certain certain things like i don't think it's bad that the, i mean the dude from duke wanted jerry mccain wants to get his nails painted like I don't feel no type of way about it because my daddy told me don't do no shit like that. That's yeah. his business. That, do that's do his... your thing. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's on him. Yeah. Get your money. Get your money as yeah. matter of fact, yeah. Donald Goldust was the actual person I was thinking of when he said that. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's Cody Rhodes, big brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah with Steve Blackman. Motherfucker like that random ass wrestler. But go, go ahead. <laughs> my bad. No, I'm just saying, like, it, there has to be like uh, a certain point where we say, this is how women probably are going to benefit from a certain thing like endorsement deals and brand deals. You were talking about the WNBA, like Mm -hmm. they need to do a better job with brand deals in general. Yeah. And if women supported it, like I I've never seen, uh, say like a, a Victoria's secret, uh, WNBA girl, like, like, marketing scheme or a marketing play on commercial like you don't even see those like why aren't these girls in things that girls are in tune with i think um WNBA they struggle from a few of the things that sometimes the pelicans struggle with right as far as you're not identifying you you have the fan base that you want and you're ignoring the fan base that you really have yeah right so for me i would like ironically i would kind of market the wnba as a sports entertainment event i wouldn't necessarily market it like a sport per se i would market it like sports entertainment like there's a ton of things and avenue like you know we always talk about like well not us but shack them they always talk about lowering the rim and it's like you know because people want to see dunks people want to see these things and it's like uh, that's a little belittling and it's like no, yeah. it ain't. It's entertaining. Yeah. That's what people yeah. want to see. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's an uphill battle. I, I just thought, I, I thought, I thought they went a little hard with the disagreeing with the big three. I, I thought it bordered on being a little bit um, hateful. It bordered right there. Yeah. I don't know, though. I don't know about the, the lawyer in the room. Like, I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of feel like. Them, 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 them women so skilled to where like when you when you only looking for dunks in their game, it's kind of disrespectful because they do so much shit like it, actually at a higher level than like than than men do, especially like IQ wise. Like a lot, a lot of dudes, man, they they dumb. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like women, they they don't have the athleticism to lean on. Well, I mean, I'm not saying they ain't athletic, but like they're not windmilling. They're not really catching. You know, lobs off the rim, so they 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 like mm-hmm. like for instance, like Caitlin Clark, dog. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you this, motherfuckers <laughs> be hating on Caitlin Clark, like Ooh. you know what I'm saying, like like she not who boy Caitlin Clark is the nicest motherfucker in college basketball, like dog. T- to be honest, no, that's disrespectful. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. She she <laughs> dog. She don't got no flaws, dog. It's nothing you could do with her, dog. Once she she literally. Once she crossed half court, she in range. Yeah, and quit why? So, yo, that's a good point, bro. Like, uh, shout out to our dog; he always on the show. And it's like, and Toledo's point is absolutely true. It's just like, it's like rest again. I keep bringing up wrestling because to me, it's like the most like common parallel. Because wrestling is supposed to be all right. Two motherfuckers is on the mat putting each other in headlocks and. Doing all kind of stuff, but then like it kind of graduated to like you know the Hulk Hogan yeah. leg drive and then this <laughs> other like this unbelievable shit like to where wrestling fundamentals don't got nothing to do with it no more necessarily right. And I think with women's basketball being still kind of in its infancy, you gotta find your audience because you can't get going bankrupt every year, and you gotta like at least do what you. It's like the old saying, do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Like, it's kind of, that's what I think, I guess. No, when I, when I think about that, though, Chaz, you can you can say that, and then the next time we watch 
you know, on Monday we watch LSU versus Iowa. We're probably going to break some kind of ratings between two teams playing basketball. Right. Not once did they lower the rims. Not once did they change the way they were going to play. Nah, you made it interesting, right? Like these Mm -hmm. are two decently, you know, I'm not going to say they're like great X's and O's team, but there's energy into this game. Like they should be allowed to talk shit to each other. They girls play basketball. Cool. Yeah, they don't. They don't stop them from talking shit. They don't stop them from. Yeah, they competitive. Lives. They yeah. sport, like, but that's the thing. They take the competitiveness out of like girls basketball. Like, it's it's not cat fights. Like, nah, they trying to fucking hoop. Like, let them hoop. Let them get into it. Let there be fucking pushing and shoving a little bit. Let there be that because you're gonna let that happen with a men's game because that's the reason why we watch. Yeah, right. That's the real reason why we watch basketball. Because if it was fucking boring in the men's game, we wouldn't watch that shit. Right. If nobody gave a fuck, we wouldn't watch that shit. The right. fact that they give a fuck is the reason why we watch. We don't have to lower the rims for them to give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And 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 look, and to be honest, and to be honest, dog, like looking at especially looking at the college, the women's college finals last year, yeah, versus like just the men's tournament in general. Right, so like that shit was so compelling, bro. Like they genuinely hated each other. But see, you could that's tell. the dope thing about college women's basketball, though. Yeah, yeah. With the WNBA, like they be waving their first round picks after like one year and shit, and they that's do. why. And that's the thing where it's like, like college basketball is own different entity, right? Yeah. For us, like they they good, they straight. The WNBA particularly, I think they're going to really struggle to recruit talent moving forward because the, the, the ladies making so much money now in college, like especially if you like a name brand, you got your marketing down. It's like what you really, man, I just don't know what you're getting out the WNBA right now is stuff for like, well, you can't, I can't even necessarily say you playing on a bigger platform because don't, the, the tournament, the, the final four comes on CBS, right? Yeah, yeah. The WNBA plays on para on Paramount, so it's like uh, you know, it's 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 just tough, man. It's just tough. Like, but we're gonna see. We're gonna we definitely gonna see. I hope I hope the ladies keep doing their thing. And this is the matchup everybody wanted, so we definitely gonna see. Um, before we get out of here, <laughs> beefing and thing. Before we get out of here, dog. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. All right. Whenever you, whenever you feel like it, if you in the city, we who dog. You don't gotta do this. Like you don't, you don't do, you don't <laughs> gotta do this. We who dog. Um, I guess in closing, man, I don't really got nothing else to say. That's PJ yeah. Brown daughter. I thought she was D Brown daughter. Who that? Lexi uh, Brown. D, that's D Brown daughter. With yeah, D, D Brown, Brown daughter, my dog. Yeah. He said yeah. PJ but, but say, but to Chad's point though, yeah. Alexis Morris was talking about when she got cut, she was text, she was talking about how um the game, the women's college game and the women's pros game was completely Yeah, I saw different. that. I saw that. Yeah. Yep. I saw she that. She was like the, the college game don't prepare you for the professional game. Cause she was like, she was like, I don't, I don't really the, she was like, she don't even really know like the plays was different. The the sets was different. It was nothing that they mm-hmm. did in college that transferred to the WNBA. And I was like, damn, that's kind of crazy. But then, but to your point, when you see like the elite, like first round draft picks just getting cut, like they what's your girl name from? I'm mean, my bad. No, no, no. I'm just saying they don't have enough teams. Like they, that's that's mm-hmm. one problem. Your girl coming back to the league though. Tia uh, yeah, no. No, oh, no, I'll say that. No. I, I know she's coming back. She's been a free agent for like three fucking years. I'm like, yo, that's marketing, though, bro. Cause I thought What's she was nice. Here's, hold on, hold on one second, Chad. Whenever, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, whenever we ain't got to talk about it. whenever you're ready. Oh man, oh David, <laughs> he talking huh? sporty. Who he talking to? He said Wait, he's, he's talking. talking, oh. he's talking whenever you're ready. Oh lord. Whenever you, whenever you're ready. He talking that's sporty crazy. on Easter Sunday. 
<laughs> boy, that's crazy, boy. You don't know, boy. I didn't, boy, I didn't play more basketball. Y'all forgot, boy. Y'all crazy as hell. Who winning? Um, you talking about uh, Kirstie, the, the chick that was yes. with uh, Kevin? Yes, her. Yeah. Yes, I she thought. she just made it back to the WNBA. Okay. Y'all think? Well, fuck. I don't. I'm about to say one one last thing. I heard was that they think that some of the legends stick around too long. Like Diana Taurasi, they like you need to get on. Like nah. I. Yeah. I, but I'm like, you gotta have legends in the sport. Gotcha. Yeah, and to and to somebody like take the baton baton from them, like like yeah, you gotta, right. yeah, you nah, gotta you gotta have somebody else to to do that. Like you can't just allow them to, you know, just you know, you can't you can't have too many Maya Moors out there to just vanish. Yeah. And she just said, "Fuck it." I'm wait. Was that the sister who got the man out of jail and retired? Yeah. Yo, shout out to yeah. her. She might, be, she might be the goat too. Yo, she, oh, she she's probably so cold. Cold. Boy, she, what? She's she, she the goat. At, she's the, 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 she the goat at this point. And but yeah, man, I, I hope I hope Caitlyn do fuck around and go with the big three, man. I think that'll be a good look for everybody. Big three doing dope things. They got they had Jalen Brown at the all-star game. It's yeah. giving it's like players who kind of like you got they they mentioned Reggie Evans. You got guys like Reggie Evans, you got dudes who like kind of were ousted from the league yeah. more or less it's giving them an opportunity to still fuck follow their dream make some money so i i, I hope she go take that five million i wouldn't yeah. give a fuck I, I if i was her manager it would have been now signed this, already this but, all i ask yeah, fucking jamal crawford get out there oh ooh. my god <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Man. It's, it's entertainment that's what people oh, not getting bro oh, that, that's god. what we want to see Hey, man. If I'm if I'm Q, I'm calling him first. Yeah, like yo, what can you? Do? Oh, he got a, don't he got a league as well? Tomorrow, now he play he do the the, the pro am. Oh, okay. that don't that don't that's just you know Seattle man. shit. Man, big three might be doing. They coming to um I think DC. They coming to DC uh this year. They used to go. They used to go to Xavier. They went to Xavier a few times. Yeah, they, 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 they was at the arena was, a couple times. Yeah. Oh, it was that man. I got like I yeah. gotta catch this game, man. I'm play, like, it. it was a playoff. Matter of fact, matter of fact, it was the uh the semifinals game was at the I, arena. I, I called like, oh, yeah, I called Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson was going crazy. Oh, yeah, Joe Knights over there. Joe, Joe Knights over there. Joe's going crazy. Joe Knights over there. Shaq talking like he won't come step out. Shaq ain't playing yeah. no fucking basketball no more. Shaq, <laughs> Shaq, got, nice, Shaq got too much money. Shaq got too yeah, much money. Shaq for like, me. nah, I'm good. <laughs> like shit. But all right, y'all, man. See, man. Appreciate y'all sticking with us on a Saturday, man. We all cool and other shit. Uh, In closing, got- I was just about to say y'all can't y'all can't say we don't fuck with y'all. Like yeah, <laughs> it's two, yeah, two yeah. hours, thirty minutes, man. We we did this shit on the love because Justin did the show already. But I was just like, man, I don't think we're doing a show tomorrow. So I just kind of wanted to. Oh, yeah, we yeah, we not yeah. Fuck, mm-hmm. we just yeah, we was just rapping with y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. We're locking in with us. It was like 130 some people in here lock, locking in, showing love, plus the Facebook people and shit. So we definitely appreciate y'all, man. For sure, appreciate for sure, dog. Thank you. All right, fellas. I'm in the stream. Y'all be cool. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Peace.